Welcome back to the Talking Lead Podcast, Leadheads. This is episode 198, getting ever so closer to our 200th episode. And even though I've not made an announcement that we're doing something special, you never know. So stay tuned and pay attention because you never know when old lefty's going to throw something at you. Can't get away with our 200th episode without doing something. Is that right, Casey? Absolutely. You should do something. You you owe everybody something. I owe them 200. something, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> There's our good buddy, Casey Betzold with Antirus Alliance. Welcome in, Casey. Thanks, man. So I want to go ahead and thank our guest from last week. We had a, a big kickoff for our 2017 National Rifle Association annual meeting uh, coverage. And uh, we did that with our good buddies at Eagle Imports, Raphael and Mike. Over there, uh, helped bring in the show, and uh, there are three gunners. Uh, Rebecca King joined in with us talking about the SPS Pantera. It's an awesome gun that they've got there for the competition shooters. And then, of course, Rob Pincus jumped in and uh, talking about the Avidity Arms uh, PD-10 that they're developing that should be out any month now. And then we took it on over to Morgan Mills, NRA country uh, singer and outdoor personality guys know morgan she's been on the show several times our good buddy and then she was joined by uh, the competition shooters ryan and diana muller who are also sponsored by eagle and uh, diana told us about the dc project where they're getting 50 women uh, in the firearms industry to go to washington dc and visit their legislators and invite them to the range and actually put a gun in their hand and uh, have some conversations with them so that is a, a great grassroots movement that uh, we as leadheads need to get behind and help Diana with that DC project. And we'll keep you posted on how that goes. And then uh, we had Grunt Style, Matt Metzger, joined us and uh, gave us a little history about the company Grunt Style, the apparel company, and uh, some new things that they've got coming down the pike. And then their um, competition shoot that they're going to have, two-gun run competition. It's going to be at the range. At 355, that's what it's called, the range at 355, and that's in, uh, I believe it's Bolingbrook, Illinois. Does that sound right? Is, is there such things as Bolingbrook, Illinois? Casey? I don't know. I don't know, but I know, <laughs> okay. they're, in, I know, I know they're in Illinois. Okay, let's, I think that's where it's at. Uh, and then, of course, uh, yoga pants. So nice. pat, pat on the back to them for uh, encouraging the, the yoga pant trend. <laughs> uh, I don't want that to ever go out of style. Oh, that's solid. Yeah, yeah. So this week we're going to continue our uh, coverage of the NRAM. Is that how you say it? NRAM 2017 <laughs> RAM, uh Volume 2. And we've got several more awesome interviews lined up. And those are going to include the scope guys from Right On, Right On Scopes, uh, Brady and Sean. They're going to tell us about their company and uh, some of the cool things about their scopes that set them apart from everybody else. And then we have Joe Bricko with Range Systems, and this is very interesting. Now, these guys have been around for a while. Uh, I didn't realize how long they've been around, but they make um, this, uh, it's called Dura Panel and Dura Block that uh, goes on the wall of like uh, shooting ranges, shoot houses, and it just it basically just sucks up the bullets and uh it's pretty cool so you guys will listen to that he'll he'll tell you more about what's going on with that um and then we're going to get into some more three gun um shooters Heath and Nikki Clevenger these guys are hilarious you guys are going to love this interview with Heath and Nikki I love these guys uh, they're my new best friends uh and then we get joined uh actually we get to, we get podcast bombed by <laughs> by my former talking lead host uh Zeke the Squatch sits down and joins us for a little bit with that and uh, he brings his brother-in-law Brandon Bond of All or Nothing Tattoo which you guys are familiar with them they used to be a sponsor of of the show and uh we did a lot of things with Brandon uh, in the past so he was good catching up with those guys and hopefully we're going to get we're going to get them on uh in some future episodes. And then we're going to wrap it up with a very cool interview when we were hosted over at the High Threat Concealment booth. Cy and Lauren Hudson, they're the developers of that uh, that new pistol that you guys have been hearing about, the H9. It's a uh, striker fired uh, 1911 style, 9 millimeter uh, double stack that, um, and I mean, it's got some cool features to it. Really cool looking gun. 
So that is another great interview you guys are going to love. And they get into the history of how they came to develop that, that H9. So stay tuned for that. Got another announcement. Big announcement here. That's why I've got Casey with us today. Talking Lead has partnered with Tactical Squirrel, the monthly tactical box service. And uh, we're bringing you, the Leadheads, a special offer here. And uh, to tell you a little bit about Tactical Squirrel and what they're all about, that's why we've got Casey here. We actually yeah, did this interview at NRA, but due to some uh, technical difficulties, we had to redo it. So <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm well, excited um, about this. Yeah, well, it's awesome to always be on your show, Marty. And and uh, first, thanks for thanks for always being so awesome and having uh, so many of us on from the Alliance. And uh, you just mentioned several Alliance companies in your rundown, and you got to meet a bunch of them. Uh, some of them you've known for a long time. Some of them new guys at the uh, at the NRA annual meetings. Oh yeah, we're and, gonna have uh, lots more on too. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, so. Yeah. So I'm here, I guess, to talk about Tactical Squirrel, which is kind of an indirect project of ours, but uh, one that's kind of within the family here. We, you know, I've been on your show before and we talked about uh, Snake River shooting products and the Team Never Quit ammo line with Marcus Luttrell that we've been manufacturing for the last couple of years. Snake River shooting products is a family-owned um, company that I co-own. Um, with my dad, Jerry, that's who you were sitting with at the NRA show. Yeah. And, uh, and he was, he was working through some of the tactical squirrel stuff. But so my mother, Jean, and my wife, Jamie, actually manage the tactical squirrel program. Okay, um, and cool. take, take that, uh, take that piece out there and, and they go out and procure products and pack products and get them out to the subscribers. And the concept of that box initially was way back before the alliance existed as a way to get Team Never Quit Ammo out in the hands of the consumers. Um, because as you probably know, when you buy, get online and buy a box of ammo and it ships to you, it costs you almost as much as the ammo and shipping. What, with all these box subscription programs out there, we talked about uh, launching this subscription concept because then it brings ammo and some other products as well. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a, a trendy thing, I guess, right now. I mean, you're seeing these these box services. I've talked about it on a previous episode. It's just, you know, I couldn't really get my head around these box services and and why people would do it, um, because I was looking at other industries and things that they were sending, and, and you know, I, oh, obviously that stuff didn't interest me. So uh, sure. to, to find out that you know we've got one that's uh, you know in the outdoor shooting world uh, that you guys have put together that's got cool price like ammo, you know, knives, um, I mean, all kinds of different things that you know for the survivalist, the outdoorist, the shooter, and you've even got some that are customized for the uh, the ladies. Yeah, that's brand the new. Lady lead heads. So, yeah. heck yeah. Well, yeah. what we what we did here is we um, we sat down and conceptualized. Uh, we actually went out and did a market study on the box the box industry because it is an industry. Um, we found something like 480 different box programs that are out there today. Oh, wow. Um, and a bunch of them actually are in this space, and there's a lot of good ones out there. In fact, the guys at Grunt Style um, are tied into one I know, and and uh, they do their shirt of the month club. And that, you know, there's just a lot of those things out there that people like. That we're in the age of people getting stuff to their front door instead of going out shopping for it all the time. So, yeah. um, as we as we were conceptualizing this ammo thing, um, we kind of got into this concept of all these companies working together, and you know, it was really hard. How do we differentiate this? Well, there's a couple things that differentiate the tactical squirrel box from, from other box subscriptions out there. The ammo is, is the number one point there. You mix ammo in with the rest of the box. There's a couple ammo subscription boxes that actually exist that are just ammo and you get a little bit of different ammo, different brands and stuff, incredibly expensive to ship and very, very difficult logistically to work on. Right. And that was part of the issue we were running into. And so as, as we started getting involved with all these other companies, what kind of dropped in our lap was that this was an opportunity to get a taste of the products within the Alliance um, and within the veteran first responder owned and or supporting space out, out to the consumer and uh, really use it as a marketing opportunity for the companies, but put some really, really cool stuff in the hands of the subscribers as well. And that's, that's really what this box has grown into. And, and uh, I know uh, Tactical Squirrel has been partnered with the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, which you've had uh, Mr. Hampstead on, I think, a time or two. Oh, yeah. And, Leo. Um, and so they, they've been a great partner. In fact, most of our first run of subscribers um, at Tactical Squirrel came from the FLEO folks, which is a great opportunity for us and for them because it's, you know, federal LE officers out there getting to try some of these products. And so, yeah. um, so really from this point, you know, we, we, we got a hold of you and talked to you about it from the Antares Alliance perspective and getting products out and letting your listeners know um, kind of what we have going on there and what's, what's cool about the product box. And uh, 
so we're, you know, we're look, always looking for people to put, put products in the box. My wife, my yeah. wife gets to shop for a living now and she loves that because she gets to go out and look for <laughs> cool products. Constantly looking for cool stuff to put in, in the box. And you ship something different every month. It's not the same thing every month, right? Yeah. So it's built around, it's built around the flavor. So, um, if you, if you go to tacticalsquirrel.com, you'll see four different box options. Um, we launched the concept with a basic and a premium subscription. The basic subscription being fifty bucks a month or forty nine ninety nine, and the premium subscription being ninety nine ninety nine a month. And um, and that's that was the initial launch. Then we then we started finding these you know there's these places around the country that don't allow ammo if you can believe it <laughs> to be shipped to people's doors. Uh, the state of New York, Chicago, um, places in Maryland. There's some. I'm Washington sure California's East. on that list. California is about to be on the list as a whole state. So they're not yeah. yet, interestingly. But so we had this issue where, you know, we had people subscribing and we had to send them gift cards, which wasn't very fun. So um, we actually launched a non ammo box. Um, and then on the, uh, and then you mentioned it earlier, we just uh, launched the Tactigal box for uh for gals also so to gal i like that that's cool tack to gal so um that's actually brand new this month um first wave of uh of girl focused boxes goes out the doors i mean you know from going to the show how many how many women are involved in the shooting side and tactical gear oh, and products it's, it's huge yeah i mean there's just as many women as, as there are men and uh you know mother's day is coming up guys and this would make a great mother's day present go ahead and uh you know your wife uh you know, she's a mother. That'd be a great gift to give her, you know? And my wife, that was my wife's deal. She's like, man, you're really missing the boat here. And I said, well, you know, the gals that are out there in the tactical world that I know, um, they want ammo. And so the, the box isn't different on the ammo side for a guy or a girl. It's not really, you know, influenced one way or the other. Ammo's not um, sex specific. <laughs> no, it's not. And a lot of the girls like getting their ammo. And we have several girl subscribers on that side of the fence. And, and uh, Flioa has several lady federal law enforcement officers that subscribe. So Maybe I should say gender specific. I don't know. Yeah, not gender, not gender specific. Not sex, but, um, gender specific. So one thing what's, she did what point, can a woman, what's, what's different in a woman's, uh, the tactic gal versus uh, just a, a normal tactical box tactical well my wife box. would be the my wife would be the I, I can give you the rundown she gave me because she had to kind of sell me on the concept and so what she uh, what she had talked about was guys are expensive to shop for because we like really cool cool stuff that's expensive girls like cool stuff as well um, but the stuff isn't as hard to shop for so she was looking for a lower price point box that appealed a little bit more to the to the to the ladies. A lot of the products will be the same as in the other boxes, um, mm -hmm. so there'll be a lot of similarities as far as you know. There's gals out there that loves ni love knives and shooting glasses and flashlights and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, we pulled the ammo out of it to be an ammo option for them because they can go get the ammo box if they want, um, and that keeps the price. That's what makes the price point lower because that ammo is just really really expensive to put in. But mm -hmm. um, she's looking at things like lip balms and soaps and and some of the girly things to go along with uh, with some of the tactical stuff. Um, but the girl stuff that she's looking at is is still fits in that tactical space, like uh, like badass babe products, for example. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. And we were we were talking about some gals. So they've uh, got here. jewelry. They've got some jewelry and you know things like that. And yep. along the the shooting, I guess I don't know. They make stuff out of bullets and things like that. Their jewelry, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, she does a spent case jewelry. She has a soap line. She has lip balm. She's got a number of things that fit within her uh, her bailiwick. And Jen Mayran, she's awesome. She's uh, part of the Antares Alliance, and they're out of Montana. And met her last year at the Montana event, and she's just been fabulous. So yeah, some cool. of her products showing up too. So yeah. give, give an example of uh, your premium box. Say what was in the most recent one, uh, and then your your uh, normal box. And then uh, just give examples of what's been in the in the boxes, what people can kind of sure. anticipate, expect. Well, um, what we try to focus on, um, or I should say what the gals focus on when they're building these out and, and putting the building the puzzle that is the box. And that's kind of what it's like. It's like building a puzzle every month, what, what fits in to provide the value to the subscriber. Um, and, uh, and generates, you know, generates a worthwhile box to send out that can be exciting for somebody. Cause that's, that's the deal. The eye of value is in the beholder, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll, I'll give you kind of a rundown of the box that just went out. Um, I had to have a picture sent to me from the ladies so I know what's in the box because um, I don't play with this pro program very much. But they, um, the premium box last month had two boxes of uh, Team Never Quit Hollow Point Pistol Ammo. Uh, it had a set of, I'm going to give you the exact name here because I got it on a cheat sheet. 
the uh, Yakima version of SSP eyewear shooting glasses, the uh, an Aviator Gear, which is another Alliance member, a, a, a keychain from them, and what what they what they did with the keychain, it's really cool if you've if you know the pilot world at all. There's the remove before flight tags, the red tags that are hanging on stuff. So they build those out, and then they may turn them into a keychain, which is really kind of cool. And then they can print whatever you're, whatever you want on there. So Aviator oh, cool. Gear is one of the Alliance members. They did our coins and uh, our stickers that uh, go out in the member packs for Antares Alliance. So they did a keychain for Tactical Squirrel. Sunsect is a is a brand new uh, company with the Alliance as well. They do um, insect repellent that has sunscreen in it. So, and it's military grade stuff. They're working on military contracts right now with their product. They're a new Alliance member. Um, so there's a sample of their product going out to everybody. Um, the one TAC TC 1200 holster and flashlight, Ooh, um, are going out in this, uh, have gone out in this month's box. The, um, Badass Babe sent some uh, soap samples to go out to everybody to try out. Uh, a company called Valhalla Wallets. They're, they're not an Alliance member, but a company we, uh, my wife found online, and and it's kind of a cool. Um, I don't know. I have one right here in front of me, but I'm there. It's like a plastic or composite wallet structure, so you don't bend your cards and break your cards up. Something that fits in your pocket a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think they put some interior stickers. There's always a set of targets in there, cardboard targets for the for folks. So that's a premium box. The difference in the uh, in the basic box was. Um, Let's see, no flashlight in the basic box and one less box of ammo. So I know the way they build out the pricing structure, the, the $50 box, they target about $75 of value in that box. And then the uh, premium box, they target about $150 worth of value in that box. So yeah. um, they're trying to give you, you know, another 25% uh, value, basically 25% off the products that come in the box for the monthly subscription as a minimum. And, um, and you can kind of customize these boxes too. So when you go to sign up for these boxes, you can choose, if you're doing the ammo box, you can choose, um, you know, which caliber you want, right? Yeah. To some extent, I know they do caliber, uh, choices. They do a lot. It's mostly pistol ammo, so 9, 40, 45. There's a 380. There's a cross section there that fits what the user wants. And, uh, and we've even had, uh, I know subscribers have got a hold of them um, back to the office and talk to them about changing their caliber when they get, you know, if they've got a nine and a forty, they can they can change it up, yeah. um, and uh, and so that you know it doesn't change the price of their box to change the caliber that shows up. If you up, want so different they, shirt sizes, you can change up your shirt shirt sizes and things like I that. I think they started uh, because of Grunt Style launching a belt. Actually, um, they're working on getting a Grunt Style belt in one of the upcoming boxes, and so they they got belt size, they got shirt size, they got ammo caliber. Um, they've got ammo, non-ammo, and then they've got, uh, now the, the girls, girls version, tactic gals version. So and they've I've seen got hats in these, I've seen water bottles in some of the, the, uh, the boxes. Um, um, yeah, a couple things here. They, all kinds some of little in, interesting tech, little, uh, wallet tools and things like that decals there's you know kind of the drop in stuff obviously that that is easy to get in boxes for the companies that are gun companies or optics companies where it's tough for them to get an optic or a gun in the box obviously but they they uh, there's they do some decals and stuff they get gun cleaning kits that we've done uh done tough tools pouches uh hats we did a i know that one of the first boxes they did was a signed hat by Marcus Latrell so they got an autographed hat um Blackbird cool. Anthem is uh, one of the Alliance members that does a band. They had a single called 22 that was in reference to the uh, the 22 um, suicides uh, on a daily basis in our veteran community. And, and all the proceeds of that are going to Lone Survivor Foundation. So I know the Tactical Squirrel focus is really to bring products to the subscribers that are supporting veterans, first responders, or veteran or first responder owned. And, and have it be interesting, cool stuff um, that's actually a useful product into that prepper survival um, tactical side of the of the market. So, yeah. so another cool thing that you guys are doing with these boxes is uh, a certain amount, a certain dollar amount is going toward veteran organizations. Correct on the purchase of these. So, with the box program, um, there's a there's a threshold on subscribers that will be hit, and then there's a future program that will kick in um, when they hit the thousand subscriber threshold. I know. Um, is kind of where they've factored that in. At some point, there'll be a factor of of each box that goes to a foundation. And right now, with Flioa, um, there is a section on the Flioa deal. One of the one of the projects with Flioa is that for every Flioa member, so actual member of Flioa that purchases a, sub, a subscription with Tactical Squirrel, mm -hmm. um, fifteen dollars gets donated to the Flioa Foundation to support nice. law enforcement. So there's awesome. there's a number of those partnerships that are out there. I know that they work on. They may have more that I don't even know about that they've been working on. Um, and, uh, 
all of them are camera shy. All the rest of the crew that actually does this are camera and, and voice shy. So, so they wanted me to jump in and do this because they knew I'd done this with you before. And I, right. and I do know quite a bit about the program. So okay. that's, well, uh, I mean, that's another good, uh, aspect of this, you know, that make the lead heads feel good about, you know, where their dollars are going. I mean, obviously it's the products that are being donated are a lot, majority of them from veteran owned, veteran supported companies. <laughs> Uh, and then on top of that, with uh, the project that you have with Fleoa and some of the ones that you're developing, uh, even more money is going to get donated toward veterans, law enforcement. Um, well, yeah, EMS. the Antares, Antares Alliance, as you know, is made up of companies that are manufacturers, service providers that are, that have to, by rule of the of the way it's structured, have a tangible, measurable. Uh, volume of money that they're giving to charities and foundations or through um, you know what they donate into that community already so sure. so by putting those products in bringing awareness to those brands giving somebody a sample of seal one or a sample of uh, you know a small taste of ammo or a small taste of gun cleaning or whatever it is um, and they want to go out and try more of that product they're supporting companies that are supporting veterans and first responders already and anybody who is an Antares Alliance member which if people if your listeners don't know this already they can be an individual member which gives Gets them a discount off all the brands within the alliance, which there's 26 manufactured products within the alliance right now, nice. um, and they also get a five dollar a month discount off the tactical squirrel box on top of that. So Ooh, um, there you go, lo- guys. Lots of benefits tied together with the uh, you know with the projects that uh, I know tactical squirrel is doing. So we've kind of made them the official monthly subscription box of uh, of the Antares Alliance to really support those brands in the alliance as well as you know talking and working with other companies I out like there it. that veteran and first responder owned. So I like it. So so Ledhead, you're asking yourselves where do I go to sign up for these boxes? And uh, I was telling you we've partnered up with these guys and you can go directly to Talking Lead's website and we have a link there uh, and it's tactical squirrel boxes. So all you do is just click on that link and then it takes you to where you can sign up. Uh, customize your box, pick the box that you want, monthly subscription service, and uh, give them give them your info, and you're done. It's it's just like and if that. they go if they go in Marty through your link, um, anybody that go, the reason they wouldn't just go to tacticalsquirrel.com and subscribe, and the reason they'd go to your talking lead and sub, and go through your link is that they're going to get a free gift uh, in the first month's box Woo-hoo. for anybody coming through the tactical or through the talking lead uh, talking lead link. So. Um, they just let me know today before I did this interview that that was something they were going to do for your uh, your listeners. So that surprised me. Okay, that's awesome, guys. So even more reason for you let us go ahead and sign up for the Tax of Squirrel boxes. Again, a great gift for yourself. You know, you want to give yourself a gift every month. You know, you're tired of waiting on somebody giving you cool stuff. Just go ahead and sign up and give yourself some awesome tactical gifts every single month. Uh, but then you also, I mean, they make great gifts. So sign up uh, your buddy. Uh, your wife, your husband, uh, they're going to love you for it. So just nice surprise every single month that you can do for somebody that you really love, really like, or maybe you just want to be nice to somebody. Well, and for that person that's tough to buy for, I know that that's kind of the feedback they have uh, they get often in the Tactical Squirrel and the monthly feedback coming back from folks is, man, when we have that person that's really tough to buy for, this gives them something yeah. a little bit different You know, month, And so. another thing that would be cool, guys, that Leadheads that you could do, is you could sign up one of our sheepdog for this. So, uh, you know, uh, somebody that's serving overseas, uh, you could sign them up for a monthly gift box. Um, Great idea. That would be, I mean, that would mean a lot to our servicemen and women overseas to get one of these uh, tactical squirrel boxes. And I'm sure if you let them know what you're doing, uh, they'll probably give them a little, uh, little extra love on those boxes. Heck yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Great idea. Yeah. All right, guys. So go to uh, Talking Lead's website. It's talkingled.com. And uh, on the in the top menu, there's a Tactical Squirrel box uh, boxes link. You guys just click on that. It'll take you right there. And then uh, if you go to their website, you can go to Tactical Squirrel's website also. Uh, just use the code Leadhead, all lowercase Leadhead. You know that's our standard uh, code so that our vendors, our supporters, our sponsors know that you guys uh, are digging what they're doing for not only you, the lead heads, but for us as the talking lead and for our partners like Antares Alliance, our veterans, our law enforcement, our fire department, our EMS services. Leadhead is the code that you would use if you go directly to their website, but just go to ours and it'll get you right there. 
Heck yeah, awesome. Thanks, Marty, for all the support in that. And and uh, I know the Tactical Squirrel team is is very thankful and uh, love the Antares Alliance partnerships that we've got in place. And, and uh, working with you as always, Marty, thanks. More to come with you guys, definitely. Uh, there's a, a huge event coming up in Montana with the Antares Alliance. And if any of your lead heads are in the Montana area, um, give, a, give a quick plug on that. Yeah, you bet. It's uh, 24th and 25th of June uh, in Columbia Falls, Montana, which sits just down the road from Glacier National Park. If you ever needed an excuse to go to go on vacation and take your family, um, that's one of the reasons it's up there. Also, little known fact for most people is that uh, Montana per capita has the highest percentage of, uh, of U.S. military veterans of any state. And the, the Flathead Valley there region where Columbia Falls sits is the highest uh, percentage and highest number of veterans in the in the state. So, wow, that's um, interesting. Focusing on that area because it's a great place to be in the summertime when it's hot everywhere else in the country. It's just beautiful there. Um, getting up into Glacier is just unbelievable. I've been in the Northwest most of my life other than my Air Force time and never made it over to Glacier until the event last year. Um, Ron Bellin is a guy I think you've had on your show before. Reaper zero one. Yeah. He is the, uh, he is the guest keynote speaker this year. He's a Navy SEAL master chief retired, was assigned to operation red wings that a lot of your listeners I'm sure know about. He, uh, sits on the board for special operations, wounded warriors. They're the beneficiary of the event. A hundred percent of the proceeds this year will go to Sal. Um, that is their focus is to reach awesome. out and get guys out of the, out of their house and back out into the field, sit around the campfire, go on a hunt, whatever it takes to get them reengaged and, uh, and keep them out of that despair, uh, fighting the demons, if you will. And, um, so Ron's coming out last year. We had John Teagan there. I don't know if he's going to make it. He's going to try to make it this year. You and I saw him at the Grunt style party at the NRA show. Oh yeah. A lot um, of people there. <laughs> and, and we had, uh, you know, that's, that event is a family focused event. It's everything about it revolves around raising some money for charity, having a good time, getting out and shooting some guns. There's air rifle for the kids and, and climbing walls and, and uh, things along the lines, you know, across the board there. So cool. it's definitely going to be a cool one of a kind type. Get out and spend the weekend with your family and on the range, meet some really, really cool patriots out there. Um, I think Charlie Melton may be up there as well. Charlie was the uh, Navy SEAL sniper instructor of guys like Chris Kyle and Marcus Luttrell that most people have heard of. So, um, I'm wearing Good chance my legend to, shirt today, baby. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it will be a great time. If anybody needs more information on that, uh, they can get a hold of us at info at nterriesalliance.com, and we can get them the info on the event. Love to have anybody that wants to come. Now, Charlie's getting ready to do some sort of record-setting um, long-distance shot, isn't he? Are you familiar with that, what he's getting ready to do? Yeah, I, I think he's working on focused on Memorial Day weekend. So coming up here in a couple of weeks, um, he's going for some uh, some long distance records. I think is what he's up to. So he's kept that uh, he's kept that fairly quiet until just at the NRA show. He started talking about it, and uh, he's been working on this for several months. So okay, we need to get him on, and have him talk about that. See if see if you can't uh, tug on a man, his, tug on his ear. A man, a few words, but yeah, you should definitely have him on and and pry into him a little bit. Um, right. He's got a. He's got a long range instruction school now down out of Texas. They've got a 1500 meter range set up down there on property. It's absolutely phenomenal. Sweet. And, uh, he's just a cool guy. Just one of those guys you'd never know was a team guy until you sit down and start talking to him. And usually somebody else has to tell you. <laughs> and, uh, but, but just, uh, just a humble, humble warrior as many of them are. And, and, uh, he'd absolutely be great to be on your show. I'm sure he'd do it too. So cool. We'll work on that in the meantime. Casey, thank you so much for being on and uh, uh, filling in for the ladies there at Tactical Squirrel. You got to get you got to get their shyness out of them. You know, we need to we need to work. We'll on work that. on them. We'll work on them in Montana. We'll they uh, they they like doing the shopping and stuff. And when it comes time to be in the limelight, both of them are shy. So, um, <laughs> so they said, "Oh, you do all the interviews. You should go talk to Marty about it." And I said, "Well." That's that's awesome, but um, people want to get to know who you are. You got they got things to say. They're pretty two sweet ladies, two of the favorite ladies in my life. So there you go. There you go. We'll, we'll work on uh, work on their uh, their podcast chops. We'll get them there you, get them there going. You go. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to uh, cut into our 2017 the Ram coverage here. We're going to kick it off with the guys at Right On Brady and Sean. Cool. Awesome. All right. All right, guys, we are back at the 2017 NRA annual meeting at the Eagle Imports booth. This is day two, and uh, we're winding down. It's getting close to, to quitting time. We're what, about halfway through now? I think we so. we got about three more hours or something like that? Yep. Getting there. Getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. 
My guest joining me now, and did I say we're in the Eagle Imports booth, by the way? You did say that. Our you gracious did. host, yes. Eagle Imports. Thanks Eagle for having Imports. us. And here's here's my lifesaver, Andrew. Thank you, buddy. Water's all around me. Some water. <laughs> Got to wet my whistle here. You know what goes along with NRA meetings? Proper hydration. Hydration is where it's important. At. Day and night. So joining me now, I have first-time guest on the show. Yep. The Right On guys, Right On Scopes. We've got Sean and Brady. That's I, right. When, when I got the first email introducing yeah. us, I thought it was Brandy. Would have been better. Should probably be better. No, I was like, and I, I kept thinking, you know, Brandy, Brandy, Brandy. Yeah. You know, so I had Brandy. So when I'm responding, and you know, yeah. I had I had a female in mind that we were going to meet, and then show. I was like, oh, it's Brady. Sorry, <laughs> I was to, like, sorry to disappoint. Man, it's that's like one Brady. Chick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy, is this her, this is Brady's? Is this Brandy's brother? Yeah, who is this? Who they but, said? Yeah. But right on scopes. Mm -hmm. So you guys are kind of new to the scene. Yep. But you're not that new. No, right. we, uh, so me and my wife own the company. Um, we started the company four years ago. That's who Brandy uh, is. It's your wife. Carrie. No. <laughs> Carrie, close. Okay. Yeah, close. <laughs> the, uh, she was probably the one writing the email, so it probably weren't too far off. Uh, yes, yeah, so we started about four years ago. Um, only been doing retail for a little over a year now. So okay. still, still new to the scene, but most of those first three years were all R&D and design and testing and the rough Whole stuff. Gamut. Yep. Make sure the product's ready. So, so give us a, a little bit of a background about your about your company. How you got started? Why Why did you get into the scope business? What What caused the, you to do that? Uh, um, I, well, so way back, I, I grew up in Montana, so I've been hunting, uh, been outdoors, everything my entire life. So, right. uh, being in this industry was kind of a natural natural thing for me. Um, former military, and then I was a federal agent, and that's kind of when I started getting into the optics side of Worked things. Worked for the feds, huh? I did. I was both, man. What did you do? What did you do for the, the uh, feds? I was a Capitol Police out okay. in D.C. Yep. At D.C. Police? Yep. Oh, man. The, uh, so I did that, and when I was out there, I started consulting for an optics company, and that's kind of what led to this. They uh, kind of started consulting for a little while, and then kind of slowly took over, took over, took over design, took over a lot of the testing, and then right. finally got to a point where it was tired of working for the man and let's do this and just me and my wife started running start with it, my so. own thing yep how do you how do you even begin to design or build a scope i mean that that's something that that blows my mind as far as you know the the mechanics and the engineering behind a scope so the biggest thing is we're not reinventing the wheel we're trying to make a better wheel so yeah when it comes to the internals when it comes to a lot of the the different function of a scope there's only it's a tube of glass in it so there's only so many things you can tweak and design right um the biggest thing we did with all of our design is we did them with the input from military, law enforcement, people that actually use the optics mm -hmm. in the real world versus computer design and what somebody thinks looks good or, you know, we did practical design. So right. that's kind of the way ours came about. So even our Zoom, we did a bigger Zoom rings. We do things that you can shoot with gloves on and still run our optics. Uh, so a lot of the design was driven by more usage than some of the other right. companies that design it based on price or design it based on you know what somebody thinks is best we yeah we went out and did iteration after iteration based on other people that are in this environment so you actually you kind of did some yeah. some footwork go yeah. around questioning people and say yep. you know if you could have a scope a certain way what would you what would you change about this scope that you're yeah, using yeah exactly you know, yep something like that 100 so. percent and that's kind of how it went and it went from like i said law enforcement hunters Army snipers up in Fairbanks, Alaska, testing it. We went the whole gamut to kind nice. of get feedback from as many people as we could, and and we're still evolving. That's the beauty of it. Is right. Is yeah, we're, I mean, we're you're a smaller a, company. You're a new company. Yeah, yeah. And we can evolve. Four years and old. We love feedback, so we we put changes in for feedback that we get all the time. So now, are you out of yeah. Montana? You based out of Montana? No, we're based out of Arizona. We're in Tucson. You're in Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. The uh, we grew up in Montana, and then through the military and. Ended up in Arizona. So. You like the weather out there better? A little is that, better. A little better than having those cold winters. That's some long ranges out there, too. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice part, too. Nice, flat, in the desert. And, yeah. yeah. You can definitely get out and shoot, so it makes Very it nice cool. and easy. Now, is that something that you took into account when you were uh, designing your scopes, too? Are different environments like Arizona versus a Montana? You know, you got two so, different yeah. environments there, you know. One of the big parts for that was. Uh, we kind of did our lines based upon the platform they're going to be on and then the application they're going to be used for. So we have lines that are AR specific, we have lines that are hunting specific, and then uh, and then now we're kind of coming out with our newest line, our Mod 7 here in a couple of weeks that's kind of captures a lot of the 
lessons that we've learned from mm -hmm. some of our lower end lines, but then puts like some high quality Japanese glass and some high quality materials into the development of it. And so, right. yeah, all of that factors in um, from hunting in Arizona and shooting there to Montana to Sean's from, he lives up in Alaska. Yeah, we throw um, them in a boat, head up the river, uh, go through the muskeg with them, uh, kick them around a little bit. Like they get abused. Um, Alaska is a great environment to test these things uh, just because of the diverse weather up there. Yeah, it's, uh, right. Yeah. Cold in the morning, you know, it could be hot in the afternoon and freezing cold in the morning when you wake up and, yeah. and uh, you don't want your glass to fog up when you're out there after a trophy moose or a, a sheep or, or bear. a bear. Bar. A bear. <laughs> right. yeah. We were just talking about bear hunting with uh, Jansen Jones and uh, Chad Enos from Caltech. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're getting ready to go on a big bear hunt in Idaho. Really? Of all places. Yeah. Sean's crazy enough to do bear baiting and have bear bait stations up in Alaska and mess with the, the, the grizzlies. And oh, I don't know about crazy. a grizzly. It's yeah. intense. It's I think a lot of fun. they're doing black bears, I think. Uh, yeah, in they're Idaho. hunting there in Idaho. Yeah. yeah it's still be fun, though. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. But uh, so what sets yours apart from, let's say, well, I'm not going to name any names, your competitors? Yeah. So a few key things is um, one, kind of what I said, our design and design. How, we came, how we came about our design. Yeah. Uh, Explain your design. Can you, can you verbally describe it for, you know, I mean, we don't have right. one, you know, that we can show. Obviously, we'll post stuff and then go to your website. But Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, the, the best As way to describe it is... driving down the road yeah. listening to <laughs> right. his talk here. Try to know. visualize Help this. Help him visualize it. The, yeah. the best way to describe it is it's uh, our design is practical. So we over-designed everything we did. So it's our scopes have their... their you can feel it as soon as you pick yeah. it up. They're not They're good-looking scopes. I mean, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. I like them, the, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the design of it is, I mean... It's harder to, to, to it is. audibly, you yeah. know, kind of describe I thought you might have had it down packed. The, uh, yeah. It's hard to do without actually showing one. But, yeah, so yeah. The, the biggest part of the design is it's rugged. It's oversized. A lot of the stuff we do is oversized, oversized turrets. Um, like I said, stuff that you can get to when it's cold, when yeah. you have gloves on, when you're in, you know, your heart beats racing. Easy to you know, use. Easy to controls. use. Smooth, really easy to use controls. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the biggest way to, like, describe it. Is it what material... Uh, is using any different kind of materials in your scope? So everything the, we use aircraft grade aluminum, okay. um, 661 uh, T6 aircraft grade aluminum in all of our tubes. Uh, we do one piece aircraft uh, grade for the full tube, so it's not welded. It's one piece all the way through. Yeah. Um, and then the biggest thing that sets us apart is even in our cheapest optics, with $200 for a 22 scope, uh, we use Japanese glass, which everybody knows that on the high end level you get Japanese you get German and some American glass for the high end stuff so yeah. we're one of the only companies that's using Japanese glass through a full product range from $200 all the way to $1500 so, that, so what's the difference in you talk about the different countries glass I mean a glass is glass what's Explain the difference between the German glass. The difference glass you can see immediately because uh, okay. a lot has to do with light transmission. Um, and then you get into some of the coatings on the glass, but a yeah. lot of it's the light transmission and the clarity that you get through it because there's less distortions. Um, the closer the molecules are together yeah. in the glass, the easier it is to see through it. Okay. Um, and the more light that gets through the so scope Does that go to in, eye, into their manufacturing process? Yes. Is that why yep. you get the difference? It, it goes all the way down to the sand they use. The sand. I was going to say a dirty-ass sand yep. in, in Germany, maybe. I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it goes all the way back to uh, you know the, the sand that's used to make the glass, and that's where you start getting the clarity and then the right. heat that it's actually formed under. And okay. There's a lot of things that go into it. So. Yeah, so I, mean, I think that would be interesting because, uh, like I said, I mean, I, when I see a scope, I mean, there's so many parts on a scope. You don't really think about all the different parts to a scope, and especially internally because you can't see internally. You know, how many how many lenses are in there? How many pieces of glass are in a? Uh, depends on the model, but anywhere from 11 to 13. Um, wow. Depending on the models, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and a lot each of each one of those has to be. And, and, yeah, every line on the other to be clear and. and and we do we do a uh, multi coating process on all of our optics, so that's what helps with our fogging, our waterproofing, um, anything that touches the air is fully multi coated. So then you don't know, get fogging, uh, argon and nitrogen purging. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Everybody thinks it's a tube with two pieces of glass, but so what about your sights? Um, what do you have different reticles? Yeah, so we have different reticle options. We use glass X reticles and everything we do too, which sets us apart too. Uh -huh. um, you kind of either get a wire reticle or a glass etched. Uh, everything we do is glass etched. Okay. which is more durable. That's supposed to be uh, in that 
better. Yeah. The etch. Do you want to get the etch yep. in an in a optic? Right? It's right. more it's durable. Less, less it, uh, moving pieces. Uh, yeah. Okay. Things you to know, fall and, out. and everybody back in the day, they used to have like you'd see look through a scope, you see the wire broke, it's just kind of hanging in the yeah, scope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so right. yeah, with the glass etch, that you don't get that wire just hanging in there that's under tension that can break or yeah. So it's a lot more durable, and uh, you get a clear, crisper uh, reticle as well yeah. that we can add more detail to because there's only so many ways you can form a wire. So mm -hmm. right. you can start getting a lot more detail and a lot, a lot more clear. What lines. variations do you have for your? We do everything. So we have over uh, 13 different reticles right okay. now that we use through our, our product line. So we nice. have everything from mill dot to standard duplex reticle. So okay. um, we do illumination as well. Um, we have BDC reticles for the 556. Is that an optional or do they all come eliminated? Optional. So we have different ones. It's, uh, it's an option. So throughout the model line, the ones that were specific that we needed illumination for, that we knew them, that kind right. of fit the marketplace, those are the ones that have illumination. Um, most of the states still in the U.S. You can't use an illuminated or a battery-operated optic to hunt. Oh, really? So Yeah, so there's a lot of regulations against that, so that's something we got to take into. What is that? I think it's just the old, <laughs> there's still kind of old ridiculous. laws on the books. and then yeah, needs to come off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, that's, that's stupid. So we still have to offer some without the illumination. Um, it, a lot of it just depends on the application you're using it for. Now, are your optics um, compatible with thermal and um, night vision and magnifier? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so our red dots, we, we're coming out with a 3X magnifier here this summer. Um, so we're, that's everything's compatible with magnifiers. Um, all of our red dots and illuminated ones are night vision compatible. Okay. Um, they've all been tested. We have some law enforcement officers in Arizona that run them and have tested them for us. And so we were working with some of the departments there. To, that's part of our testing and sure. evaluation. So, yeah, everything's night vision compatible, thermal compatible. Cool. So, yeah, it makes it nice. So what's the, what's the biggest scope you got? How far out can I go with one of your scopes? Uh, biggest long range is uh, our Mod 7 that's coming out here in a couple weeks. We have a 5 to 25 by 56 uh, with the 34 mil tube. Uh, okay. It's an illuminated first focal plane mill dot reticle. Um, that's the biggest one we have uh, yeah. as far as zoom capabilities. That's kind of, once you start getting past the mid to high 20 zoom, you start getting in like telescope sizes. They start getting really big scopes. So right. that's kind of where most people draw the line is, yeah. you know, you get 25, They probably get pretty expensive yes. once you start doing that too. Yeah, exactly. There's like a cost like jump. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of, so the biggest one we do is 25 power right now. What's your, what's your price points? Uh, that's the other thing that sets us apart. So kind of right, continue, right. continue answering your question about yeah, what yeah. makes us different. So um, look, we do everything, like I said, from $200 for a dedicated 22 scope. Um, we have red dots at 250 to 285. Oh, so you are doing red dots too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So we have one out right now. We call our RD, our rifle red dot. Um, comes with a one piece cantilever mount, kind of set up for AR systems. Um, and then this summer we're coming out with a, a new micro red dot that actually ships with three different mounts in the box. So you can mount on shotguns, cool. 22s, ARs, whatever platform you use. Nice. So yeah, it's kind of a one stop shop. You pick it up and be able to mount it. <laughs> the, uh, I think Sean's dazing out over here. We've got to get him to wake He's up. Like, What's that guy doing? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then we go up to our Mod 7 line that's coming out here uh, in mid May that goes up to $1,500. So we kind of run the whole gamut from 200 to That 15. big one we were talking about, how much does that run? 1429 is MSRP. 1429, that's yep. an illuminated. First focal 56, plane, 56 objective, objective yep, 34 big, mil two, fat objective. Yep. What's your eye relief? On so the, that's another really good thing. I've seen pictures we, uh, of your scopes. Yeah. I haven't actually the uh, we have hands on with your scope. About four and a half got inches of eye relief. Get you one. The uh, so it's it's nice. I have a scar right here from an old 300 mag with an old scope when I was a kid. Nice. So eye relief is very important. I got to my me. my Harry <laughs> Potter <laughs> scar right here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> so yeah we were like four and a half inches of uh, average eye relief through our whole product line. So okay. The uh, which is it's taking some people to getting used to because they're not used to cheek welding when right. mount a scope because that's a lot farther than most people can, are used right. to. Most people are getting up on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's nice to be able to have a few <laughs> few inches, especially when you start getting the higher calibers. So, right. So uh, I was over there. Um, booth next to us is Inland. You know, they've got the M1. You know, they make the M1s over there. And uh, they've got a version where they've got the old original scope on one, too. Yeah. And, you know, I was trying to get up on that thing. I was like, man, how do these people? But those guys back in the day with those scopes, they were shooting 300 yards. You right. Know, oh, dead yeah. eye dicks. No yeah. problem, man. With like one, it was probably like a three power or a fixed power magnification. And I think it's three power. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like three power. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they're just you know knocking squirrels out of trees. Yeah, two, no problem. A foot and a half long and a half an inch wide. And yeah. Shooting the German. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it took some skill back then. It uh, did. It actually so, did. Uh, it's amazing the technology leap that's happened in the last ten or fifteen years in optics. Is yeah. The, uh, we go through that with some of, with with 
our and customers. a lot of these innovations that we see in in you know, optics and firearms and it's developed for our military you know, right for military use and then we get the ancillary benefits yeah of the trickle down is, is really yeah, nice where you start getting some civilians. of the applications it's a, it's a training yeah. process of training the civilians on how to use it and right. what to look for and what to expect. But it's nice kind of getting the benefits yeah. of that trickle down. Now you said that you, you know you guys aren't trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, we're all about innovation on this show. You know I love companies that go out there and they try to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. You guys got any any plans to maybe? to do something out of the, the ordinary in the optics world? We do, we'll, uh, we'll have to talk some more on a later show. We got some, okay. uh, I'll give you the teaser. Yeah, we got okay. some, uh, we have some good ones coming, some uh, some electronic stuff that's out, available out there now for, for long distance shooting and for uh, okay. some of the digital technologies for not just looking through a okay. tube or a piece of glass. So good, I'm we'll, glad uh, to hear that. We'll, yeah, We'll get back to you on that one because we got some good stuff coming. That so. gets me excited, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give me a hint? Other than electronic. The, uh, we'll leave it at that and let leave it at uh, that for right now. Yeah, sorry, okay. I know. I know you want a little more of a teaser. The, yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be a better yeah, surprise when you don't know too much about it. You just got. We are the show for exclusives, so when you when you're ready to I drop like that, I like it. It'll be all yours. Let the, me know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You'll hear it here first. The uh, yeah, we got some fun stuff coming out because your the availability of, of processors and and smaller screens and stuff for digital and electronic. It's right. It makes it. There's some fun stuff we can do. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be awesome. So you said you guys have been walking around quite a bit. Um, what have you said? Have you guys taken note of the other companies that are set up here and the products? Have you seen anything that really stood out? And you're like, well, oh, that's it's kind of interesting. That's different. The uh, every show we go to, it's nice to see the innovations in the AR world because there's there's new companies that pop up all the time. Uh, but it's nice to see the people trying to do it differently, kind of what you were saying. So, yeah. Um, one of our partners, F1 Firearms, doing some, a lot of the skeletonized stuff where they're getting super, super lightweight ARs, yeah. 6.5 Creedmoors that are... I like know, yeah, I like the people that are making them lighter. Yeah. That's what I want to do on my next build. I like I like building ARs nice. from the ground up. But I want to do a super light, you know, but cost effective because when you start getting light, I right. mean, it gets expensive. The, the less oh, yeah. gun that's you get there, the, the more carbon costs. fiber, yeah. you know, and the, the magnesium and, you know... Well, the F1 guys are doing a really cool skeletonized type type makeup over there in Markup. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, another guy, uh, another company we work with a lot is Frontier Tactical doing uh, yeah. some of their interchangeable they warlock love system. Yeah, Thanks, Scott. The uh, I love those. It's fun to kind of be able to change out calibers and the way they did it was right. Like, you know, they, they and that truck gun they system. got that fits in a purse. Right. Yeah. No? Pretty yeah. utilitarian. They are yeah. 15 fitting in a Innovative. purse. They helped us uh, develop some of the some of the stuff we're doing with our micro red dots coming out this summer. So they awesome. were helping us out with that and. So it's fun to see a, yeah. a gun with a And I like to see that too. I like to see companies working together too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, that's we need more of that in this industry. Right. Rather than and it's, I see a lot of I mean it's not that it's rampant or anything like that, but most companies that that I've been around or have anything to do with, you know, they do like to collaborate and talk and you know work together and it, it, like a scope company and an AR company or you know, they come together and they come up with different ideas because they're looking at it from different angles, you know. It's like with our product, if we did this to your gun, or your gun was able to do this, and you know, yeah, yeah. I That's, like that. Uh, we like that because I mean, ultimately, an optics is an accessory. It needs a firearm to go on. Sure, so, yeah. So the yeah. beauty of that is it gives us access to a lot of these companies that we get to work with, and you get access yeah. to their engineering, and you get access to their thought process on how they right. want to their take on a on an AR, or their take on a different weapon system, yeah. and so it's fun being able to work with those guys and kind yeah, of see absolutely. and collaborate with it because. A big, a big thing for us too is being veteran and being former law enforcement. We want to work with other people in that community, so yeah. we're able to uh, kind of get a good base together and start working together with a lot of other veteran-owned companies and help each other out. I mean, ultimately, we're That's small right. companies all trying to do it, so yeah, it's nice to help each other out where There's we can. There's room for everybody to exactly. succeed. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Now, are you guys doing uh, spot and scopes? Not yet. So we okay. we came out with our uh, first uh, HD ED binos in December. So we came up with those, mainly kind of the hunting market. They're 10 by 42, super lightweight. Um, and so then the next step is we're going to come out with a spotting scope. We're okay. hoping by the end of the year we're doing some testing. Right. Um, so the, the, the nice part about what we do is we test, we develop, we test, we develop, and we'll, we'll push it. We don't set timelines on when we come out with new products. Right. We wait until it's ready, and, it come, and then we release now, it. Now, do so. you have one buy scopes? So we, we have fixed. No, we don't do any... Um, we have variables, so we have like one by fours, yeah, um, one, one by fives, yeah, 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 yeah. but no, just like straight one power. You got like a like one that. by eight? 
Not yet. No, we do. Okay. The, the biggest one we do right now is a 1x5. Um, you got a 1x5? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, that one's coming out here in a couple weeks. That's part of our Mod 7 line. I don't think I've seen a 1x5 before. It's like a 4 or 6. Right. Has anybody got an 8 out yet? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if anybody has come out with one yet. The, uh, eight. I was thinking maybe somebody had. Maybe I was just dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like dreaming. It. Yeah. The, but that, uh, how, what's the... What's all right, to get one at, to start off at one and then be able to magnify? What's the challenge for that? Because a lot of times you'll see them start at three right. and go up to nine, or you know, why not just start at one? Why, why wouldn't they all just start at one? The biggest, well, first off is the application that it's for. Um, one power, if you're the traditional three by nine that we all grew up with and that's been around forever, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that at one power you're not there's no magnification there's yeah. no anything so most of those rifles that they were going on you're not shooting at 25 yards or you're not shooting so you always wanted magnification sure um, so that that's kind of how that yeah. it came so about. it's more so, it more of the tactical yeah so where the one power combat some of those came in is you, you're clearing a house or you're shooting a target 20 yards out but yeah. then all of a sudden you need to shoot a target 200 yards out so you need to be able to dial up some more magnification and right so that's kind of how that came about um yeah where, but what i'm saying now is now in, in today's world why not just start everything at one Right, but is it is there some some uh, in the physics me- behind it that it's in the mechanics of the scope? Yeah, so a lot of it is the way yeah. the magnification happens. It's it's that's why we have like a five to twenty five, so they're five power, mm-hmm. um, or you have like a one to six, so it's six power. You know, sure. so it, it kind of magnifies by by a certain number each time. Mm-hmm. So then that's kind of in the makeup of it, where you either have like a four power scope, so like a three by nine. If you look most of the dials, they'll go up by three, six, nine, so it goes up sure. by three power each time. Yeah. Um, so when you have one, it, it puts a whole lot more work into it because you, a lot of the scopes Is out there. Is that what makes it more expensive? Yeah, because right. a lot of scopes out there okay. aren't true one powers at one. You can still see right. a little distortion. Yeah, still so to have yeah. a true one power and then, uh, and then be able to move that to a four or a six power, the, uh, that's kind of where you run into it a little bit. So it's a little harder to engineer, a little harder for the design, and then a lot of it's just application. It's not a one-size-fit-all type thing. So right. that's kind of where it comes into. If you guys don't mind, we're going to have a joiner. we got Joe Brico Correct. with Rain Systems. Rain Systems. Yes, sir. So put your headphones on here. We're with the Ride-On guys. Do you know them? Have you guys met? No, we haven't. Brady, nice to meet you. I'm Sean. Good to meet you. Sean, good to meet you. Yeah, so... Now we've met. We're kind of spilling over, so we, there's room for everybody here. All right. so, so where can people get your scopes? So we sell direct, and then we have a dealer network. So um, okay. right now we're in 10 different states, uh, over 30 different dealers, uh, and then we do direct from rightonusa.com on our website. Okay. Um, the easiest is your local dealer. Just go um, to your local dealer yep. and say, hey, yeah. where's my ride-on scope? Exactly. And they'll they'll say, well, I don't have them. Don't have it, then they'll get them. Exactly. Yeah, that's yep. right. Like RSR? So, and who, who's, who's so the no, we don't, we don't do any. We do all direct. You just go direct yep. to. We okay. do all direct with our own dealers and our own sales team. We don't do any distributors. Um, okay. Have you big, got like a, a limit? What's your, what's your limit? As far like as a minimum, a no, minimum and that's order. so that's another thing we do different with our dealers. We don't do minimum orders. We don't do an annual sales like minimums, anything like that. So okay. a big part of us is we're a small company trying to make it, and we know there's a lot of dealers out there that right. they don't have the six grand minimums, or they don't have oh, 20, that's good. twenty grand yeah. in sales. So we're trying to support some of those guys, and that's why we don't do distributors. We want we want to control the quality, and we want to control our customer service. So we don't like having that third party kind of dealing with it, where gotcha. we kind of lose that control and. You know, to kind of it, provide that to our dealers and our customers. So, so right on USA, right mm-hmm. on.com. Right on USA.com. Right on USA.com. Yep. You've got all your products posted there so our yeah, lead heads can up. go and, and check it out. And, yep. And do you, do you guys do discount codes or anything like that? We do. We yeah. do. You want to set one up for the lead heads? We would love to. We'll, we'll get you something out there that you can okay. push out. Lead head. Yep. Everybody uses lead head for Perfect. our discount code. So. We'll do it. So lead heads, you got a discount coming soon. When they get that set up, we'll let you know. And uh, I'm excited to, to try them out. Like I said, I haven't haven't got any hands on with them, but I've heard people talk about. Heard Nate yeah. talk about them. I've seen them online, and they look they Perfect. look first rate, man. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely get that out to you. And yeah, any questions you guys have? Yeah, you guys want to hang out while we talk with Joe too with yeah, with branches? Sure. Yeah. yeah, we'll hang out. Okay. So cool. feel free if you have questions, you be my co-host for this. How about Perfect. that? All right. Okay. Good deal. Joe. Hey. Joe Bricko, Range Systems. Correct. So um, I got a little bit of brief history about you guys uh, from the email. I can't remember the, the gentleman's name. That Was it you? Uh, Randall. Randall, yep. yeah. So Randall and I were emailing a little bit back and forth. 
And uh, you guys do commercial and private ranges, is that right? You yep. design them. Yep, design and manufacture. And then we also uh, uh, we also build law enforcement and, um, and, and military um, facilities. So okay. that's actually how the company was founded. Okay. So, so give, us, give us an idea of uh, what, what goes into designing a, let's say, a military range. Okay. And then we'll talk about maybe a private range or something like that. Yeah, so in the, in the, in the military uh, world, uh, the shoot house is a, is a big thing. You know, it's a shoot house, yep. Yep, training mm -hmm. facility for them. That's actually how our company was founded. So that was probably made up about 90% of our business. Okay. So what we, what we manufacture is a ballistic rubber panel. So that's what made us a really good fit for the, for the military shoot house world. Okay. So we work directly with special operations to develop this product. So the advantage of our rubber uh, products, trade, trade named uh, DuraPanel and DuraBlock. DuraPanel and DuraBlock. Yeah, DuraPanel okay. and DuraBlock, correct. Okay. So what that is, is that's going to be the, the facing that goes on the armored steel that physically makes up the shoot house walls. So okay. the advantage of this product is uh, you get complete round encapsulation. So you can shoot point blank into that, nothing's ever going to come back out of there. Cool. So you can put literally thousands of rounds in each one of these panels and you're going to entirely eliminate your lead dust and then guaranteed nothing's going to come back out of there. So the old shoot houses in the past, I mean, you're shooting into gravel and you're shooting into plywood walls. Wood. Wood. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. you know, there's just been horror stories, obviously, over the years. So they were look, looking to make an improvement. So we were obviously a good fit for that. Sure. So that's um, other markets have, have recognized that, the advantages of that. And that's, uh, that's really how we kicked off our, our commercial uh, market. Is that so, a picture of it over there? Yeah, so I just hopped on my phone here real quick. Taking a look here, Joe. The uh, I thought I'd seen these before, where you you have the demos where you're man, literally guy, point blank. You're just point blank, blank into that yeah. wall. Yep. yep. That's intense, just man. Nothing. Just That's shoot, awesome. Just what kind of rubber is that? So what it is is it's actually recycled uh, tires. <laughs> really? Yep. So a lot of it is uh, the tailings when they create the tread on the tires, so that way there's there's no fibers in that, there's no metal within that, and then we have a patented process where we're actually uh, pressing that rubber with a with a binding agent. Okay. So it's um, you know, so it's, a, it's super, a patented product. Super compressed. Yeah, that... it's, it's compressed at a really, really high PSI. And then uh, what's unique is it's, uh, it's cold press. So other, wow. other rubber panels, just general uh, panels that you'd find that would have alternative uses, it's, um, it's created with heat. And when you create a panel with heat, it's one dense object. Right. And that tends to break apart in the ballistics okay. world. So with our cold press process, it's all those little strands that have complete memory, so you get the self-healing effect. Nice. So that's cool. And you said thousands of rounds, any caliber. Yeah. So we've done some testing, and we've we've put two twenty-two hundred rounds in a in a two by two panel. That's only two inches thick. Really? Right. Yep. With nothing nothing coming back out of there. So, and then our, our blocks, which is a bigger size, uh, for a different application, we can put five thousand rounds into 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 a one a foot and a half. 1.5 square feet. Okay. So I think there's some trust there when you're standing right below a block and just shoot right above your head into it and, yeah, that's <laughs> and know that you're not going to get yeah, any frag like out of point it. point blank range. <laughs> yeah. Fire the AR that's into awesome. that. Seeing is believing. So, so you guys got to go to the website. A uh, there's an yeah. awesome video there. Uh, is that you shooting? That's not me. That's one oh. of our trainers. Okay. So. Yeah. So uh, what's, your, what's your website? It's uh, range-systems.com. Okay. And you can click on the YouTube link on there, or you can search us on uh, YouTube directly at Range Systems. Range Systems. Yeah, that's a cool video. So, right. um, so you start off military application with this in shoot houses, which obviously, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. So that would go over their existing wall, whatever material they had in their shoot house. You put that on so you get an extra level of protection and mm -hmm. security. Yeah. Uh, it would probably add some, some sound um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Dead sound name. reduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah sound reduction yeah. for the outside too. When you're yeah, in there. It, it does. That's another uh, the sound. benefit of the panel. You do get some sound reduction. Okay. So it's a NRC rating, a noise co coefficient of 0.65. So a 65% reduction of sound. Nice. So, oh. yeah. so really we'll nice. do retrofit jobs where we'll take existing shoot houses and we'll put those panels on the walls. But most commonly, is we'll build the entire facility. So what we have is a, we have what we call a smash concept. It's actually a modular concept. So we'll design armored steel 
to bolt together and will make up the entire configuration of the house. So then we're gluing our panels directly onto our, our onto smash our smash concept and it's all bolt together. Mm -hmm. So literally you could take these houses apart, you could ship them wherever you needed to, reset up and you got a, you got a modular uh, live fire uh, facility. So nice. that's, uh, that's kind of how we got our start. Um, years ago that made up about 90% of our business. Now with the way the commercial market is and indoor ranges, uh, private ranges, we're probably a pretty equal split. It's probably a 50-50 mix. And I'm actually the commercial um, sales rep. So I'm, I'm doing all commercial ranges right now and that's, okay. that's the market to be in. I mean, it's, uh, it's at a peak right now for sure. Nice. Yeah, so. I mean, so let's talk about price range on, on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Those panels, what do you price them per square foot or? Yeah, so the panels are, are two foot by two foot, so they're four square feet, and they're $45 a panel. Okay. I can imagine a, a room like that one that you were in, that's that's quite a few panels. You get a couple thousand panels, so. <laughs> yeah, a couple <laughs> yeah. thousand panels, it adds up a little it, bit. It adds up, yep. It can, it can definitely so, add up. Now, yep. do you guys design ranges, like, from scratch, start to finish, or is it just the walls? Are you putting in, you know, the different kind of... Um, shit. Retrievers? Well, yeah, yeah, retrievers, thank you. So so what makes yeah. up a, a typical and uh, commercial targets range? Targets and yeah, yeah, tar everything. Tartar retrievals and stalls. So, stalls, yeah. Yeah, so a typical indoor range, you're going to have your, your bullet traps. We have several different types of bullet traps. We have a granular rubber trap, a steel trap, and then a block trap, which uses the, the blocks that I was describing earlier. And then you have overhead protection, so obviously you don't shoot out of your building. It's kind of a kind of a big problem, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little we, little frowned upon. Yeah, we so. see those pock marks up on the roof and wonder how yeah. I got there. Right? Yeah, you look, you see daylight coming through. You know, <laughs> right? You, you don't you don't want that. And then we have uh, different types of, of stalls. So that's just the protection in between the shooters. Okay. Are you and doing then, the ventilation too? Uh, we actually use a partner for that. Okay. So, you know, we don't get our hands in that. We're we're just ballistic equipment experts. So gotcha. so we have a, a preferred uh, partner. Okay. Uh, out of Illinois that we work all our projects with. So cool. So carries ventilation. They're they do a lot of ranges. They're yeah probably the best in the biz. Get some get some high dollar in those ventilation systems too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, it's it's an important part of a range for yeah. sure. But with so. with your with your system, your panels, I would think that that cuts down a lot on you know. I mean, you're still going to need the ventilation, but yeah, you, you do, don't but you need do as much as much lead reduce, dust, and you yeah. reduce a lot you of lead dust. Reduce a lot of it because yeah. we'll we'll put those less our, work our, on those ventilation systems, right? Definitely, yeah. And the filters are very expensive. It's a win-win. Yep. So you said they uh, for the blocks. You said they so you, they're adhe adhesive to the steel backing, or so how do you replace them? Bolt. Once they, is that what you said? Yep. Nope. So our uh, our panels, which is the two inch thick panels mm -hmm. that you'd find in uh, the shoot house I was describing, that adheres directly to the steel. Okay. So when we incorporate our blocks, which is the larger blocks, uh, that's in a situation where we want more volume into those into those walls. Okay. Those just stack loose, and then okay. they they get held in with a clamping system. So it's super so easy to replace them then once they're at their life at their limit. Then ro rotate them out. Really. Rotate yeah, one nice. in that's near the bottom into the into the hot spot. And, and how do you know when the life is when they're ready to be replaced? How so would you know when that? It's a real visual thing. The best way to explain it is they look they look pregnant. They look so pregnant. <laughs> think they about think up. about a block that's only you know two feet wide, and it's only nine inches tall. And you put five thousand rounds in there, it's, it's eighty pounds of lead. You're right. Wow. So it, it grows quite a bit. Yeah. So you can look at it and go, yeah, I should probably replace that one. It's not square yeah, anymore. Looking, <laughs> looking a little oversized. I was going to think at some point it's going to fill up. Right. You know, and you're going to have to. reach its capacity and then, yeah. yeah. So you can reclaim the lead off of just out of these blocks and, and mm -hmm. put it into a waste stream or whatever you need to do to dispose of it. Yeah. So for really large projects, uh, military projects, when we end up with a lot of the blocks, we'll, we'll handle all the all the uh, d disposal of that but mm -hmm. i'd say your average uh, your average guy where it's onesie twosies he just works with a local scrap person they're really happy to take them oh i bet i got yeah, 80 bet. pounds of lead in there and they're just they're sure. fighting for them so yeah. that's how those usually go we don't we don't hear about them we just we just know that there's a little market going on there for them they put so, it in order for a new one and the old one disappears yeah the old yeah. one the old one's gone magically so yeah. and what about the the rubber can that be recycled as well i mean you're using recycled tires to begin with so can yeah. you just keep recycling your yeah, a lot of people glue them back on after that that amount of shots, but we recommend buying it, buying a new one. Right. Yeah. But, um, well, I'm just saying for you guys, if if yeah. they're done, what? How do they dispose of it? 
Um, you know, again, the, the same kind of process. It, it's yeah. either through one of our disposal companies that we contract with, yeah. um, or they're just getting rid of them onesie twosies in the same case. But we don't take them back. It's just too much of a, of a process. Yeah. Um, we just we, we just build from from fresh. It's easier to make know, new ones. Huh? It's easier yeah. to make. So new they're just taking yep. some recycling place for the rubber and yep. lead and. <laughs> yep. Do all I know. That. I know. There's options where. Um, where companies will take and actually burn them for energy, so it's actually a fuel source. Huh. Oh, wow. I like there that. You go. Yeah, yeah. multi-purpose right there. Multi-purpose, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. what about a private range? What, uh, what would you, or a, yeah, maybe a, a three-gun, are you guys doing any three-gun? Have you done any, like three-gun ranges? We or do. We'll, we'll design some indoor ranges that allow for, for three-gun shoots. We actually have a range in our area where we've done that, and they do, they do a lot of three-gun shoots. It's, cool. It's cool stuff, so, you know, you got, your, your sidewalls are all armored up with uh, with steel and our ballistic rubber panels, and then uh, we uh, we sell some portable traps that work great for the three gun shoot. So you can set up different stages, do your three gun, and you're right. in a, you're in a you're in a totally tactical type of range. So shooting 270 degrees, so it's cool. it's, it's unique that yeah, way. And nice. You get the dynamic environment. So where but, could um, we've got listeners all over the United States and the world? Do you guys just do in the U.S. right now? No, nope, we're, we're, we're all over the world, yep. So we have an international sales rep, and that's, where a, could, that's a big uh, part of our business. Where could our leadheads go and maybe arrange, you know, name some states where they could go and see this and try it out? Yeah, so ranges I've delivered locally. We just uh, I just sold a few in the Chicago area, so it's okay. called the Chicago. So we got uh, Hodgkins, Illinois, Mokina, Illinois. Um, out, on the, out on the East Coast, I have a big facility out there. Um, that's um, Safe Side Tactical, Roanoke, okay. Virginia. Um, obviously, in Minnesota, where we're located, we have you know a handful of handful of ranges. Name um, a couple that are up there um, that, that have that in that way they can if they're, if they're in the area they can just stop in and, yes. and check it out. So Mills Fleet Farm is a it's, it's a big uh, a sporting goods uh, store mm-hmm. in, in Minnesota, so we have a range for them. That's going to be in uh, in Baxter, Minnesota. Okay. Um, Rogers, Minnesota. We have Target Sports, which is pretty near our office, and then we actually have a showroom set up at our office, which is right in New Hope, where we can do some of these live fire demonstrations. So, oh, that would be awesome! Anyone's right? in our not bad. Area. I see not a road trip to work, right? Yep. Road trip, yep. <laughs> road trip to Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely. So we have two ranges there, and we can blast into the sidewalls, and you can see it firsthand. Oh, nice. that would be awesome! Yeah, that would so, be. Good. Do you have any in Tennessee? Um, I will soon. Okay. No- Knoxville and Memphis, which is. Uh, which is being contracted now. Okay. So, I know a couple of ranges in the Nashville area that I don't know if you know they would do it, but I mean I, they've got an indoor shoot house at one of these that definitely would be a great option for those guys to add to their shoot house. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, again, if you want to upgrade and have a little better bris- ballistic performance, I mean the rubber panels will definitely do that. Yeah. So, right now they're doing just ammunition. Mm-hmm. In there, but if they were to add this, they could do live fire. Yep, turn that into so, live fire. So it's a it's a whole different deal when you when you got when you got the real deal in your hand. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no doubt. So, so uh, are we missing any products that you guys offer or services? I would say one thing that's uh, probably the fastest growing market for us right now, or segment, I should say, is uh, private in home ranges. Okay. So it's it's just crazy. It seems like right I'm doing it. I'm doing them all over the place. You know what? I've got a room in my house. <laughs> I would love Come to, to think of it. <laughs> so, so let's just say just a, a regular residential house. How would you go about? And let's say you know I got neighbor here and I got a neighbor back here and I got a neighbor over here. How would you go in designing a room inside a house, just to, you know, regular residential house, to make it a a shoot house? And is that yeah. legal? I don't know. I don't think think there's any laws against it, is there? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. So I've worked through the approval process with with folks in the past. It can get pretty drawn out. I worked with a guy in Ohio. It was like two years to finally get approval. Really? Really? I'll tell you, most people, uh, they go under the belief system that uh, what goes on in their own house is their own business. Exactly. um, We've seen them seen them labeled some different things on the architecture plan so sure, sure. and then they just uh, they end up being ranges and that are these that's mainly their own new discretion. construction houses or are these some existing homes typically they're new construction so what i'll do is i'll work with the architect uh the space is always down um in the foundation okay so, okay. so typically so they're, below under, they're under they're yeah. underground which makes sense yeah, yeah. Contained a little bit more 
yeah, you have concrete sidewalls, and then once you're backfilled, I mean, you're pretty, you're, you, you got a pretty, a shell that's right, pretty soundproof. Right. Yeah. So, the thing then, you're worrying about is <laughs> you know, overhead yeah. protection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, and then it's the same build out process. I mean, you'll have your bullet traps and your baffles and your sidewalls and target retrieval systems. I mean, some guys go all out and it's like a, a mini commercial range. I mean, some guys, uh, uh, they'll just install a bullet trap. Just money. And, yeah, it's right? just money. money. Yeah. 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 If you got it, spin it, right? Yeah, if it's meant to be hung on to it, have handlebars. I definitely would put, <laughs> I would definitely put a, a basement range in my house. When I hit the lottery, you know, that's right. what I'm going to do. Just, just walk downstairs and start shooting? Yeah. Nice. yeah. One of the first things you should do. <laughs> yes, you when you win the lottery. lottery. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Call Joe and get over here quick. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, <laughs> <my> architecture, Joe. <laughs> yep. yep. You guys work together? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's fun. I mean, have buddies over and, you know, be able to shoot and not have to go to a commercial range. It's Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So I have one, awesome. so I know that. So, oh, you got one in your house? Yeah, it's a little makeshift range, so I okay. didn't I didn't go all out, but uh, it's pretty much just a bullet trap, and you just you don't mess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even like you said, you got the portable the portable little shoot houses too, that so they could yep. set up in their they didn't want to put it in their house, they could put it in their backyard or something. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. If they had the acreage and the space for it. Yep, we do a lot of that, and then it's just a portable trap. I mean, you just order them online and just don't tell your yeah. neighbors what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a work shed. Yep. Man, yeah. you could like wake up in the morning and not even put pants on and just, <laughs> and go, just go shoot. shoot. Just go shoot. Yeah. yeah How absolutely. awesome would that be? Yeah. Shooting your skimmies. <laughs> shooting, shooting your pajamas. Your, ta- your tactical drawers. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That was something I was talking to the the nerd guy about. I was like, you need to. I don't think anybody has any tactical undies. I don't, hope, I don't think they've gotten that far yet. Tactical undies, right? Yeah, yeah we don't. We don't currently have that in new product development. But it's tactical it's, undies, yeah, <laughs> definitely an idea. I don't know. I think I think you could probably recycle some tires into some tactical undies. That would be. It might be a little heavy. It's like if the bullet comes in. It's going to get it's trapped by stunning. your tactical undies. <laughs> yeah, you might want to put some armored steel in that mix too. What kind of penetration? I guess it depends on the round you're shooting, though. How far is it going in? To that and how thick is that you see you tell us how thick it was yep so our, our blocks are 12 inches in thickness and if you took 12 a, inches okay. if you took a brand new block and you shot five five six into it it's going to be defeated within the block but it, it is important to know that all of our all of our rubber products are backed with armored steel okay that's that's really what you know is defeating the round ultimately mm-hmm. so with our with our two inch rubber panels it's always glued to steel mm-hmm. so you know think of it as a as a mechanism to keep anything from coming so back. So the rubber's just capturing it. It's just capturing yeah. it, and it's uh, it's just preventing anything from from coming okay. back out of there. Where so the steel the, is still. The, the steel is, is what's it. defeating their own. Yeah. So that's uh, a lot of people get a little confused by that. They, okay. they think they can take a two-inch rubber panel and just they all just, just have build that walls steel and, backing or anything. Yeah, yeah. we're ballistic. No, it's it's always backed. Just it's start Lego building it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just stack them up. Yeah. Would, it, it wouldn't work too well. So. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask that if there's any round, like, what's the maximum round that can go through, but ultimately it's the armored steel behind it. It's the armored steel okay. that's, that, yeah. that's gotcha. yeah, yeah, that defeating. So you don't want to go put the the, just the rubber up against a wall, you know, drywall in your house or no, that's, wherever. Okay. That, that just one of, that's clarify just one of the clarify that, ladies. Because yeah. Yeah. that's what I was saying. I was yeah. like, yeah. I can I just put these anywhere. Right? Yeah. 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 So. Misconception there. Okay. It's always coupled with steel. Look at that. We've got a T-Rex in here. <laughs> That's crazy. The crazy things you see at NRA. We can't hear you. <laughs> uh, is that a Very cool, to man. That that is uh, that is interesting. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, they want to talk about doing this, they go to your website. Is that how they get in touch with you? Yeah, my my contact information is listed on the website. So under commercial, uh, you can call me directly or shoot me an email and. Uh, we can uh, start working on some plans. Okay. Joe, thank you so, so much. Appreciate you being on. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yep, yep. Right on. Cool. Thanks for having us. We'll, uh, we'll right on USA.com. Yep. We'll get a coupon out for your lead heads, and we'll get that running. Okay, we'll yeah. We'll do, we'll do a little promotion. Yeah. Perfect. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for having and us. And lead heads, don't forget about the 1776 United Design the Lead Head Logo Contest, where you could win a T-shirt with that logo, a patch with that logo, the classic Talking Lead logo design t-shirt and a hundred dollar gift card from 1776united.com go 1776united.com bottom of their website click on leadhead contest
And we will be back with more coverage from the 2017 NRA annual meeting. Bam. Right? He's like, How did you sell you guns? <laughs> Yes, but not Where's the way you store? imagine. I Where's can, but we're not going to do it through this entity. <laughs> I got Rob's whole interview on there from that <laughs> other company there. <laughs> Who was that? Bunker. Bunker Tactical. Uh-huh. Oh, it was. All right, let me hear you. Check, check. One, two. You got to get closer. I got to get closer. Right there. You hear that? that was, yeah. That's perfect. I, I thought it was too much. No. Okay. I feel no. like I need to wrap. Mike, check. Mike, check. One, two, one, two. Throw a beat. <laughs> no. Time for your hype man to come in. <laughs> You're not going to rap? I thought you were going to Oh, come on. That was just a mic check, man. Okay. I'm, the, I'm the hype man. I'm back here like, what? Say it. You got this. You got That's it. Right. You got it. Right. That's yeah, right. Do Are it. you actually recording it? Do it. Yeah, I'm recording it. Oh, oh, you've done the smart thing now. You've done the smart <laughs> Just, recording. Right? Sounds, yeah, you, yeah, you can always goal. trim this it is, out, this right? Yeah, exactly. This is the show now? This is the show now. This show is so much better since you kicked that asshole Zeke off the show. <laughs> <laughs> that coming from the <laughs> asshole Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got another guy crashing it, too. Argo! Here for the party. Oh, well, Wait, no, no, no. It's, it's radio. It's you can't radio. just smile. Okay. There's no He's just smiling. You have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the house. I'm just the hype person. He's All in right, the house. guys, we are back at the 2017 high, NRA annual out. meeting here in Hotlanta, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> Woo! Getting toward the toward the end of the day. Everybody's wound up. Looking forward to, to hitting the nightlife again tonight. Yeah. And I have uh, – I'm going to save you for last. Oh, God. Save you for last. I've got uh, a couple of three gunners here. Pew, pew. Top on the scene. Eagle Imports, three gun shooters. Got Heath and Nikki Clevenger, right? Correct. Man, I got that right. I know. I'm impressed. The first time. And I didn't even have to look down at I'll my say, notes. If I get Clevenger one Clevenger. more time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no A in it. <laughs> Do you ever just want to grab your boobs when these people say that? I don't have enough to... <laughs> <laughs> to make but it work. Right? You do. Heath, on the other hand, <laughs> there we go. Good. Heath can do it. Heath can do it. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just see flex it. The Let's chest. see it. This show just really went weird. And uh, as you it's as honest. you heard, there's there's a another voice that sounds very familiar. I don't know who you're talking about. You got to get closer. You know oh, what? I'm sorry. I, d- I don't. Do you know have who a radio show or not? Uh, yeah, but you ain't gotta I have, get that loud. I have engineers now. <laughs> like they tell me what to do, and I just like am robotic with it. Right. So pretend I'm your engineer. Oh, there. Is that better? That's perfect. Oh, nice. You can hold it. I, I, I feel like we're <laughs> doing the sweaty balls thing again. The sweaty balls. Ladies and gentlemen, the Squatch. Yeah, I'm Zeked back. Zeked out. Back. Crashing. Crashing? Guest? Crashing? Am guest. I, am I guest? guest? No, I'm you're a guest. guest. You're not crashing. Joining the party, Sweet. not crashing. You were invited. That's right. I, I am back crashing. Back crashing? As a guest. Once again. There we go. I'm back crashing as a guest. That's it. Now, I have a question. <laughs> All right. Husband, wife, or brother, sister, or what? No. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Oh, I didn't know. It was, I got to ask. It's a legitimate question, <laughs> I guess. It's because you look old. No. It, wait, <laughs> I don't, I don't look, look like old. I can pick up a woman this hot. Is that well, what you're saying? Well, I was thinking the reverse. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just was rude to you, and then you had to say something sweet. Look, look at that. that. That's, a good That's how our relationship Sorry. works. That's experience. Now I know it's definitely a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a good husband. <laughs> so we're going to talk Eagle Imports. Um, and what you guys are using in your three-gun competitions here? Primarily the uh, Pan- uh, SPS Pantera. We talked about that earlier, and yes. the Pantera and its awesomeness. It is. I'm telling you, you can't beat it. So, so tell it. tell me, what were you using before that, before you started using the, the Pantera? Uh, a custom-built 2011 on a STI frame. Uh, both of us, uh, local guns, awesome gunsmith. Like uh, a five thousand dollar gun, you know something. The three thousand thirty five hundred. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah. Built. And I love. I mean, I didn't love it, but I mean, it it meant a lot to me because it was a shoebox full of parts. So I bought a part <laughs> at a time and put it in a shoebox until I had a whole gun in a shoebox. Yeah. Took it to this awesome gunsmith and he just did work on he it. You stuck like, it all together for you. I was like, it takes a, a gunsmith to make magic like this. And then shout then, out. Shout out Shout to uh, get, Jeff Abernathy it. at Tommy Guns USA. Yeah. Awesome gunsmith. Word, so. Jeff. 
Now, What's up, Jeff? Is that, Speaking of gunsmithing all at out? and things that rhyme. Uh, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> okay, I was going to say y'all sound like Charlotte. y'all sound like we do, so I figured it was southern. Yeah. So. We're a little yeah. southern. Nice. A little southern. I, live, oh, yeah. I live like a talk. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I hadn't heard the typical Carolina new. I can't say the no right. No. 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 no there it is no. right there. No. 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 <laughs> no. It's almost no, like uh, now, nah. but with a little more uh. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say nah. 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 The South is She's awesome. an import. She's from Pittsburgh. Oh. Ain't nothing so wrong she, with imports. She's got a, uh, <laughs> an adopted accent. Yes. It gets worse she when I drink, too. It. I don't even know why that happened. <laughs> so get Hanging around southern. here. You get smarter. You get more southern when you drink. There you go. You slow down a little bit. You talk a little slower. You do. Like in the you south, know? people talk slower. You relax. Slow. Yep. Because yeah. you're not so uptight. Then it That's rolls. Right. It just rolls off the tongue. People in the south just relax. Kick back. That's right. It's more yeah. funner here. Funner. Funner-er-er. You don't see nobody moving up north. That's all I'm no, saying. No, it doesn't <laughs> And if it is, it's because Not they had choice. to get a job up there that paid more, and they're miserable right. after about six months. And then right. they come and back. And then they yeah. back. Exactly. Exactly. It right. snows, and they're like, they're like yeah, it ain't worth it. Done. it ain't I thought I wanted that. to do it, but I, I don't. <laughs> so you guys are from South Carolina? Yes. Right? And you were born and reared there? Yes. And you're... I'm obviously, from, I am plant. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. PA. Oh, Go like Steelers. big city Pittsburgh. Yes. Oh, wow. Black and gold, baby. So how big of a culture shock was it going to South Carolina? Huge. So when I went to high <laughs> school, so I moved in the middle of high school. So when I went to high school up north, you had everybody had to ride the bus. There was not enough room in the city for a parking lot big enough for every all the students to drive. Teachers yeah. drove. That's it. Right. I get on a bus down here in the south to go to school, and I pass like five cow farms. And there's like goats on the side of the road and stuff. And a little southern boy came up to me and he goes, are y'all twins? Because I have a twin sister. I said, yes. He goes, what's your name? I said, Nikki. He said, is that her name too? <laughs> I was like, are you your twins? <laughs> yeah. It's in my sit. Who, who would name it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I bet it's Ricky, isn't it? No, it's Danny. Well, Nikki and Danny, Nicole and Danielle. Okay. My, oh, my dad okay. had all girls, Alexandra, Nicole, and Danielle, and calls them Alex, Nikki, and Danny. Three boy names. Wow. <laughs> What's that? What's that yeah. tell you? He was expecting somebody. Was someone really wanted a boy? Somebody I guess. wanted a boy. <laughs> they also only wanted two kids and then twins. <laughs> Just boom! Surprise! I tell my sister. I tell my twin. I tell my twin all the time. She's hey, the mistake. <laughs> She's the mistake. She's the, yeah. She came out last. I said I was supposed to. Who was named first? I was. I was named. Well, there after, you go. I was named after my uh, grandfather, my great grandfather. She was named after a commercial, so that's why I a tell commercial. her. Commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so she that's how I tell her, see I was playing, they knew about me and they were gonna name me after a distinguished name after Nicholas, my great grandfather. Keep it in the family, yeah. yeah. And then then they're like, Oh crap, we're having two and a commercial Coca Cola commercial came on and the girl <laughs> next door's name was Danielle and that's how you got named. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell you that like, she's mentally scarred. She'll be here tomorrow, you can ask her. She, okay. <laughs> yeah. How do I know it's her? She'll look <laughs> really? I know, right? She'll, she, does she shoot her too? No. No? no. She'll have her name on her shirt, right? You, you, you probably won't, you, no offense, but probably won't be able to tell them apart, but they are not identical. Okay. Oh, really? Correct. Y'all, so y'all look that much alike, but not identical. Correct. And we I plan on know. wearing similar shirts, so we're going to throw You're some gonna, people off. That would be That's awesome. Y'all get a good film of that. Just saying. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say cool. have her walk up to all the spo- all our sponsor booths. Like I'm gonna send her here to Eagle first, <laughs> first thing in the morning. And I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna be like, go up to that dude dressed in the suit and tie, and just give him a big smack on the butt and say, hey man, what's up? Say what's up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it'll be Rob or Mike. One of them's so gonna have a suit on tomorrow. I don't know. Which Rob one. always <laughs> has a suit on. Yeah. yeah Rob will. <laughs> Mike never, typically will have a suit on too. Yeah. Say, find somebody with a suit. Just say. Right. Hey, we I'm just say a big a guy tomorrow. with a suit. And that way you know it's Mike. <laughs> I'll wear a suit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> she may. She may tap my ass. Who knows? There you go. <laughs> so, she might. You, you know her husband. So we're talking right about. Next to you. The pants. No, it's, no, it's, it's her sister. Oh, the sister. Okay. Her sister. Okay. I'm not going up and smacking anybody. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and he, he used to be a federal officer as well. So oh. No, local. 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 Oh, you're federal. Sure. Oh, you're federal. No. In South Carolina? Yes. Nice. Still are. Okay. Yeah. My bad. No worries. Misunderstood. So it's you're a current officer. Correct. That is also a competitive shooter. Correct. Nice. He's narcotics. 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 That's what it was. Sorry. Narcotics. Is yeah. that where you do your training yeah, yeah, yeah. for competitive shooting? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. So, so we were we were talking yesterday, and uh, we were like, you know, talk about some of the bust and stuff. Yeah, and you're talking about it, and, and you're just like, you've never done a like a selfie with any of your bust or anything. Nope. But the nope. one the one 
thing that we get you to do is selfie. This is a great story right here. Is, is a solid kilo of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I mean, I've gotten plenty of that. You, you know what I mean? But never one like solid brick, brick. Like, yeah. they, like you see them shipping. I've never gotten a solid brick. Big and, Miami Vice right. brick. And when, right. I get, when I get one, I'm definitely doing a selfie with the brick of coke, you know. So. You put a little white right there? No. 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 <laughs> no. That's, that's the kind of thing to get you investigated. Yeah. That's it. He, he'll be peeing in a cup the next morning after yeah. that. Yeah. Right? You'll yep. be under investigation. Yep. So we were talking about the uh, the Pantera. Yeah. Oh, Not awesome the band. band. Awesome band. But I told him that's, that needs to be the theme song for that gun. Which it, song, yeah. though? The the what was it? Walk or, or I think it was Walk. Walk, yeah. Corey play it. Corey had it on his phone. Yeah. And he started. You mean this song? Yeah. And he started playing. I was like, that's it. Yeah. That so go back to uh, Shot Show. I think it was Shot Show when we did it. It might have been the NRA last year. I can't remember when it was, but they all run together. After it Walk. was the Four Richards and a Ralph episode. Another yes. one of those. Hilarious. Was the last time I was on here. Uh, it's been probably two, two years. years ago, yeah, wow. since you've been on. Slacker. And now I am. Well, first, I quit, which is the worst. He quit form because of he said I don't have time to do yeah. you know the show anymore, and now he's doing a radio show. So, but see what what the, what the brilliance is, and we're going to announce it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so Left yeah. Hand and I, it was our plan all along. We we're gonna we we're gonna fake this whole like breakup. So one of us would get another radio show so we could take over podcasting, right. radio, and, radio, and YouTube. So right. it's, it's this big, like, Trifecta. vicious, yeah. Divide and conquer. So we'll it's slowly, mentality. he's been on our radio show. I've been on Talking Lead, and it, it seems. I think we know, need to do more frequent enough. instead of two years. Yes, yeah, we need to. <laughs> So we that, can tie we've in. had a lot of listeners from the, uh, and of course with the radio show we're pretty much just Nashville. It's not yeah. Worldwide. Oh okay. So it, it's funny because we've had listeners wow. saying, "Oh, that was one of the best shows y'all done." Is when you had the talking lead reunion thing. Right. I'm like, oh well, we need to do it again. And we, we just haven't, we done, haven't it. done it. <laughs> Busy. Y'all, y'all have chemistry, even though you kicked him to the curb. Is that what you're saying? Right. That's well, what I, I heard. Exactly. I guess, te- technically. Since he's still doing it, I kick myself to the curb. Right. No, he kicked me to the curb. He's like, no, no, no. It's, now. it's like out. a divorce. You're willing <laughs> yeah. to leave the house and everything that's, just that's to get away. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes. I just signed, <laughs> sign the papers. Sign the papers. So you, can you. You, you can have everything. You can have everything. Just, just as long it. as I get away. Get out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was a so huge, <laughs> huge learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, and I still haven't got it figured out. So. <laughs> but it's been but enjoyable. Hey, around. welcome back. You're at what, like 190, 200? Uh, this, the, oh gosh, we'll go over 200 with all the uh, the interviews from NRA. Yeah. So you're doing good. It'll go over. Because I left at what 160. I don't, I don't remember. It was over 100. Was. Yeah. Are you it talking episodes many. or followers episodes. on Facebook? Episodes. Followers on Facebook. Woo-woo, <laughs> 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 yeah. got 200 I'm up to 200 week. followers, yeah. baby. Yeah. Woo. We're going to have a big giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get Brandon over here because we crashed, too. So. Let's talk guns real quick. Uh, yes. Sorry, Pantera easily. SPS. The Pantera SPS. Before that, you were shooting these high-dollar. STI. STI, builds. custom blah, blah, blahs. The Pantera really- out-of-the-box is ready-to-go competition. Correct. Right. I Take thought, it out. Yeah. Put ammo I in. I thought it. a gunsmith myth had to work the magic. Right. They don't. No. They don't. If you buy this out the box, if the magic's already there. It's there. It's ready to go. You're ready to I win mean, competitions. My, yeah. I'm, I broke mine because that's. You broke I just, it. <laughs> I don't know. That's I what broke, you do. I break stuff. That's my forte. I break guns. Luckily, I broke an AK the other day, Zeke. Look. Again? Yep. Broke an Again. AK. A Palmetto State Armory AK. Luckily, what was it? A, oh, do they know the Glock story? No. Have so with the Glock? Our, our biggest triumph in the beginning was we had the exclusive on the 40. Was it 43 or 42? The, it was the, it was the two one. that they came out at the same time, the long slide yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. The, the 380. The 41 and then the, the, the 380. Yeah, the 380. And we had an exclusive interview, and at the time, it was unheard of for new right. media podcasts to get exclusives on anything. It was always like magazines, TV shows, and everything else. We go down to Glock. They give us a full tour. Exclusive. We're all proud. It's exclusive. We get to interview Josh Dorsey at a Glock USA. Right. General Dorsey. <laughs> he's sitting there. And he's like, is it okay to mess with it or is this like a prototype? And Dorsey's like, oh, yeah, that, you're not going to break that thing. 
it wasn't 30 seconds later. He goes, I think I broke it. <laughs> Challenge <laughs> accepted. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Dorsey grabs it, and he's trying to put it back together. He goes, how in the hell did you break this? He goes, what the <laughs> fuck did you do to my gun? <laughs> Challenge accepted, but sir. Here's then, your broken Glock. Then there was the, the Vector. Yeah. Which they love it us for that. blew up. Yeah. They, the vector they blew up. They love us for that one. Then there was a 308 <laughs> that was uh, being tested in the field, and I broke it. Yep. Yep. The You're not shooting any Side of charger <laughs> broke. I say, with me and you so, together and him being my parts manager, I'm telling you. Look like, out, man. He is fixing more stuff. But luckily, the warranty for, for them are, is fantastic. Lifetime. I send it's it back. It's a lifetime warranty. It. That's right. But we have a huge match coming up next weekend. So they're just going to send me... Another one. There one I go. haven't shot yet, nothing. I'm not worried about it. Out the box. Because out of the box, oh, it's going to shoot. Because you haven't it's made any up. mods to it. I, nope. I've it's never just, had to. That is awesome. So I'm not, they're like, here, we'll send you one just so you can get through this match. I'm not even, the fact that I've never put any rounds through it on for this particular gun that's coming in. Not, not worried about it. Not even worried. It's good. Can't yep. phase me. What's yeah. been your experience with it? Um, excellent. All mine have run. You do right. any mods to yours? Um, I mean, you're a guy. You, some, you have to do yeah, something. Yeah, we yeah. always got to change. I have, some, I have some personal preferences. I, I like to undercut the trigger guard a little bit so I get my hand a little higher on the gun. Right. Uh, I stippled the one I got this year. Stipple? Yeah, I stipple. 99% uh, of the time, you don't need that. But uh, those matches where... It's uh, hot. It's in the south. It's hot. Right. Uh, it. Not so much that to me, but... Um, when it's bad weather and, and three gun, some match director always wants to make you like get down and go through a pipe or or something, you know. Yeah. And I, my my hands always end up on the ground, and then the next thing I got to do is grab a pistol. And if it's raining and wet, and I got a handful of mud, I still right. don't want the gun that moving around. That slimy mud on there. Yeah. yeah. So so I stipple the grip just just for that, make it good and aggressive. A little extra insurance. Heath would stipple the grip on a flashlight if he could. I'm telling you. I'm, <laughs> oh man. I, we, just, I like <laughs> stuff. Stipple the milk cooler. We all like stippling. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. got these. The we got these verses. <laughs> we got the BP9 concealed carry. Right. We each got our own. And he, I wanted green, so he got gray. Well, I guess he liked the green one so much, he carried the green one around. Next, you know, I come home and he stippled the grip on it. <laughs> I said, "This is not your gun to stipple the grip on." Is now. <clears throat> you you stippled the steering wheel now. too. I mean, switched <laughs> because I can't carry a stipple grip a on a can carry because it'll pick my you know, clothes. I wear, right. I'm a girl. I wear yeah. a little. I wear the. You know the fancy the you can't the fix smooth. a picked you sweater you know can't fix that and he done stippled a grip and now it's all picking on my tank tops and stuff it doesn't move when Sand you shoot paper. it it's nice <laughs> sand it back down bp9 cc excellent carry gun now you're uh what are what other guns are you using um i know we, shoot the, we, shoot we the, talked about this the other day. Oh, sorry. We're talking Eagle because I also shoot well, the Grand Power. Oh, okay. So I you, shoot the x okay, for USPSA. Just, okay. Okay. Um, a little bit. We, we don't love, do that a whole that, lot. I love that SPS so much. But when I can, I shoot the Grand Power. I have a setup, the belt set up, everything for that. And it is dead accurate. And I'm not With that the rotating good. barrel. Yeah. Rotating barrel, you know, everything. Slides awesome. set open it? and everything. Uh, it's so, cool. Yeah. They have it here? Yeah. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. I'm going to get Matt. So it's a, it's a rotating barrel instead of a uh, traditional locking block. Right. And uh, so the barrel doesn't rotates. tip it up. So it doesn't. There's and it comes, no muzzle. It comes scalloped from the factory like that. There he goes. He's got one in his hand. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty so how, now, now I'm going to tell you what you need to do is drop the hammer on it and do a oh, double action pull on that gun. Dude, now keep in mind it. that you're that gun is it. out of the box. Drop the mag. Oh, you said drop the mag on? Drop the hammer. Oh. Drop the mag so you can redo, reset yeah, it. Yeah, I want you to do oh, a double action. Yeah. Do a double action trigger pull. We verified this gun is empty. Nah. Oh. Okay. Try a duck. Now do the double. Do no, the no, 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 no. Don't, don't reset it? Don't reset it. Do the double. Right. Okay, now now pull, pull the trigger the whole, whole way. Right. Double single. That's smooth the whole way through. Exactly. There's no give at all. No. It's like triggered. where you, where it where it that's, resets, it catches right there. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? For a double action pull out of the box to be that smooth, and then you got a crisp. There's like hardly any reset to it. Yeah. I, I don't feel any. Like as soon as it clicks. I know. It's like because you know how most double single oh, action, yeah. like you get to that reset, and then you got to pull it. You know, a couple millimeters. There's done. Yep. 
What is this? It's phenomenal. Is it Grand Power? It's Grand Power. Excalibur. Excalibur. Shoot it in a 9mm for USPSA because it is production. Production legal. Oh, that production is legal. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps so, with the, the muzzle rise, so I mean, you are on target. That's what I was asked. What is the benefit of the. the so you don't get barrel? the. The rotating. Yeah. It's, it's a, a different system. And, uh, it's not a penis. <laughs> it's that's not a penis. That's not a penis. <laughs> yes. I, I don't like to shoot penises myself, either. <laughs> Especially your own. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't help they can't see your hand, actually. It's, it's right. to, uh, oh, that's right. Radio. About now. I, th- I'm I was not showing a, him I'm the difference a, that you get with that, and this is just straight. So. Yeah. Mar- Marty is rubbing one finger back as it <laughs> raises up. <laughs> Anyways. So to give the play-by-play so people know what's going on here. Uh, it locks up different. There's there's supposed to be, some, I believe, less stress involved, and uh, it's a little flatter. I think you're able to run a little it's, less. Yeah, it's a flatter in. shooter. Yeah, yeah, it keeps yeah. It flatter. Well, so. and you can lighten the slide up a lot more too because you don't have to worry about it going all the way back. Yeah. Right, that's pretty slick. Yeah. And it doesn't. The, if you, if you feel just the lock up on it, like you know, you take a regular lock up gun, lock right. up lock or something like that. If you hold them side by side and pull back against that spring. You know what I mean? You can really, yeah. You can tell a difference in how they lock up, and how much easier that one rotates. That is slick. So, what's the MSRP? It's nine ninety. Surprisingly, it's under a grand. I know that. It's it's under a grand. hundred grand. Under. 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 You know, like four hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah, it's so, still slick. I like yeah. So it's same trigger. They don't do anything to the trigger. So you get sights, that same, though, right? Different sights, yeah. same great trigger though. Yeah, that's awesome. That yeah. trigger is amazing, isn't it? Especially for a double out of the box gun. Yeah. That's, that's I, the I had thing. it for like thirty minutes yesterday. I was, if I had to compliment Eagle on any one thing, it's that on their line of pistols, the the triggers on almost every on every gun I picked up that that they carry. Right, are amazing, especially at the price. There was point. another one that I had. It was the one of their um, that BP nine, the Super three eighty. Yeah, and the trigger on it was really nice too. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you, you getting buzzed? <laughs> okay, I'm making sure I'm not getting like summoned. Yeah. So how long? How long have you guys been in the competition shooting? I've been shooting competition for I want to say it's either nine or ten years. Well, I started just shooting pistols. And I've Nikki only been doing since 2014. Three. So you're fairly new to to the circuit. Who's, and I jumped yeah. straight in the three gun. Who's, who's better? better? I'm jumping right into it. Do you guys ever no, compete against? Shoots, no, he shoots better. That's oh, okay. Yeah. He has a strong. He's better with the pistol specifically because he has a stronger grip. I mean, the grip on his pistol. He's broken two STI you safeties know why? with his grip. Because he stipples them. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> But no, that's I mean, why he breaks them because he stipples them. <laughs> and there's things that I mean, I I can load shotgun a little bit faster because I prefer practicing that, whereas he prefers dry firing his pistol a lot more at home. I prefer practicing loading the shotgun more. So, so how many years versus how many years again? Ten to three. So, you in three years? Did she pass what that was? Yes. Ah, see, did that's you, what I was going for. Did you teach her anything? Do you listen to him? At first, when I was like completely naive, you take advice from him. When I when I knew nothing, I did a lot, and then I, you know, you learn a little bit yourself. You get a little cocky, and then he had to bring in like our good friend Morgan Allen. He shoots um, IDPA, USPSA USPSA. stuff. Great, Um, awesome pistol shooter, great guy. Dude is sick, but I respect. I not that I don't respect my husband, but. When I'm hungry, I look at him and be like, look, I'm tired of listening to you. Can we go get food? Right. If I sit down with Morgan and listen to Morgan talk about shooting guns and try to learn from him, I, I keep my it's mouth shut and try to. It's a typical spouse kind yeah. of thing, you yeah. know. I mean, it's One, me the spouse is not going to listen to the other spouse, but they'll listen to somebody else who tells them the exact same he, thing. I get yeah. home, and he's like, so what did you and Morgan talk about? What did he teach you? And I tell him, and he's like, did we not just go over that last time right. we were out Sounds at Sounds strangely familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, me and Morgan, me and Morgan have taught classes together before. You know what I mean. So, right. we we both have the same understanding of what needs to be accomplished and how you need to accomplish it. So you know he's not teaching her the wrong thing. Right. Correct. Yeah. Well, one, he's, he's, he's a national champion. Yeah, he's a national like, champion. He's like, oh, he's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's that's like, that, that's right. Nice. Is he grandmaster? He's not grandmaster. Kind of knows his stuff. I can't. I, what's it? What's the new top level IDPA above master? Awesome. Grandmaster? Is it grandmaster? I, I, I would think. Anyway, he's that's got cool, that. Logical. He's he's got that. 
better than that guy? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I don't. We don't it shoot went. the stuff where you get rankings like that, so I don't know all the USPSA yeah. 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 Shoot three lingo, guns. you know. But uh, three anyway, he, he's a really good pistol shooter. He's good yeah. with a rifle too. Nice. You know, it trans transitions very well. The abilities to shoot. Right. I tried to get him to shoot three gun. I got him to one three gun match. He shot it. He said, "I really like it, but if I do it, it's going to cost me a lot of money, and I'm not prepared to do that right now." Yeah. What's your What's your most favorite um, three gun? Uh, what do you call them? Not competition, but where they have the competition. Stage, not facility, stage, location. Facility. No, shoot, like event. Mm. Your favorite three gun event. Favorite three gun event. Like Rock Castle has the pro am and right. Somebody else will have one in Texas, you know. My, What's your favorite one to go shoot? This, one you look this, forward this to. This might sound a little self-serving. You guys do but Bianchi? Do you do that one? No, we haven't done that. Um, my favorite one is actually the, uh, the Three Gun Nation match at Clinton, which is our home range. Okay. It's an hour home door turf. to door. And uh, we shoot monthly matches there all the time, so it's really comfortable. I'm familiar with it. It's a familiarity. Yeah, and, right. and, and it brings – it's like bringing all your friends to your house. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Versus traveling somewhere else. I feel like no, you got to advantage again. the edge a little bit. Well, it's just really, like I said, com comfortable. It's you comfortable. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're going to have a better party at your house than you're going to have at somebody yeah. else's because you're comfortable there. You I'm, know? I'm bringing family over. That's fine. Who, who, family who over. we always said for three years that we were going to keep having them on, and it just never happened. <laughs> I said I'm bringing family over. What's up, guys? Brandon Bond in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hi. hey. How's it going? It's awesome, man. This is crazy. NRA, so man. So many people are here in my city. It's so, crazy. Yeah, it That's is That's what I'm crazy. saying. It's like having your friends at your own they, In your, your own home. backyard. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. I had no idea, too. I mean, I knew it was a big deal or whatever, but you get busy and whatever, and I had blown it off, and like a week ago, I started realizing that so many people coming on my up. phone are all coming to Atlanta at the <laughs> same time. Are we allowed to cuss? So many people. Yeah. He'll, he'll believe you it. You know this is talking lead, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah you okay, can do yeah, that. Yeah, he'll yeah. believe it. So, <laughs> I don't anymore. <laughs> oh, you don't? Nope. Nice. <laughs> Bleep free now. Yes. That's good. I'll let That's the curse good. words flow. That's good. <laughs> That's, we have a First Amendment for that. That's yes, right. Exactly. exactly. That's a good good way to do it. Yep. Exactly. Being an artist, the First Amendment's almost as important as the second one to yeah. me. Yep. You know? like. I well, know, sometimes without the second, you wouldn't have the first. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's important. Great. It's good to see you again, so brother. fuck you. Good yeah. to see you, too. <laughs> We Love found that. out today that somebody actually got tattooed there because they heard about All or Nothing on Talking Lead. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Totally oh, I know. random dude. Over yeah, there. I know several lead heads that have gone down there to, yeah. to get awesome. tattoos. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. That's your special. I don't want to seem say, ignorant, uh, but I, that's your specialty. <laughs> I want a tattoo. He's a tattoo artist. <laughs> Okay. He is a tattoo. Cool. He is. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't have that. Yeah, no worries. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you're talking about like grandmaster and, and shooting competition. That's where he is like with top tattoos. of the he's top of the echelon in the. Everybody's got to be good at something. Skin art yeah, business. Right. Yeah, man. We're not curing cancer, but we sure can. I'm not good. You can cover it up. <laughs> you can cover it up, can't right? you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Most, it's Hell still yeah. the most award-winning studio in yeah, the country, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Or the world, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is impressive. Yeah, you still walk in, open. You walk into vacation. the studios, and you know how most studios, it's just, what, is, what do they call the little, I can pick the shitty tattoo stuff? Flash rats. Flash. Yeah. No, all you see is trophies. Custom. Trophies. Oh. Trophy, everywhere. Trophy, trophy. Yeah. It's amazing. It looks, you guys like, it looks like we sell trophies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nicky's got a handful. Like, we're really addicted to bowling. I just got one. Just got the one. Just got the one. And it's all faded and gotcha. needs work. It's we can yeah. fix that oh, for you. you can no touch problem. That, that, that was my. That was my. I mean, I've been on SWAT over 15 years. That's all I know. I can't tell you exactly. I was going to ask right if now. that was SWAT. We yeah. do our local SWAT guys too. Yeah. We uh, sponsor like a lot of businesses will sponsor T-ball. Yeah. Or whatever. We sponsor our SWAT guys <laughs> there for you the, go. the SWAT roundup down in Orlando yeah, man. and all that. Cool. Very cool. And cool. Uh, so they all get tattooed. Well, I wanted to talk to you because I'm I'm looking for somebody to do guns. Boom. On, yeah. on me because you know, not every. I've learned this. Some people are good at some things. Even like so, it, it might be a good. This individual might be a good tattoo artist at doing like He's faces or something yeah. like that. Well, that this guy's good at faces. Might not be good, good at travel. doing guns. And there this are guy a might lot be of one trick ponies in, this in guy's the tattoo good at Garfield. world. Right. Like yeah. somebody's really good at Japanese or somebody's really good at portraits. But right. what this makes guy's good really at body good, parts. And what defines a really <laughs> special artist is somebody 
that transcends that and they can right. do all styles I agree. and that's the next level the upper echelon to be yep. able to bust out a japanese sleeve on one day and a portrait the next yep. and have them both be perfect yep. that's that's and those are the kind of guys we hire down there. Cool, we man. import them all to Atlanta. Well, I guess I'm coming to we Atlanta. Go this, is, this is like the oh, yeah. best variety the show best on the internet. And I'm not just saying it because he's family either. Like I've got almost the full sleeve. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, there. yeah. And he's almost there. Best stuff I've ever seen. Cool. Yeah. Point that away from Good me stuff. I'm sitting here with a gun pointing right at me. I figured I'd <laughs> well, muzzle in yourself it over here. there. <laughs> let's very, Let's show everybody a thing. Yes, there we go. That way people feel better. Right so, on, right on. Heath, Heath, Nikki, back yes. to you guys. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up <laughs> real quick. Cool. We're we still talking tattoos. I got five of them. We got another one. <laughs> you you want to show us? What do you got? I can't. You got one on an arm? I got one on my wrist. Oh, okay. I got one on the back of my neck. I got a Tom Petty tattoo. Says free, Tom Petty. I love Tom Holy Petty. Holy cow. It says free falling across my shoulder. I have hip tattoos, and then I have a tattoo on my leg. Nice. nice. The one on my leg we might cover up, we might remove. I don't know. My, it was my first tattoo, you know, you thought, of, oh, yeah, I'm going to love this forever. Not so much. I don't love it that much. Right. Well, that I much. am officially getting summoned. So I've All right, so you, you officially have to come back. I officially will. I don't got shit to do. He so <laughs> we got to do the Four Richards and a Ralph. It's what? tradition. Yeah. Four Richards and a Four Ralph. Richards Four Dicks and a Ralph? Yep. yep. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> what it is. Big Richard. That's exactly what it's it nice is. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. Yep. We'll see you. See you. Squatch, thanks see for coming by, buddy. Man. I'll see you later. Man. See you later, right? Yep. All right. Yep. Doing business always. Yeah. Business. Yeah. I mean, business this, this is for business to be done. Yeah, man. Instagrammies. Here we go. What is it? Dragon Toilet? Something like that? On Instagram? That's our ranch. The ranch is at Dragon's Toilet. Yeah, we have a gun range and a big big cool thing happening but no the tattoo shop is at aon tattoo okay we're all or nothing tattoo all or nothing all tattoo all or nothing yeah. tattoos yeah, that's right and i'm brandon bond 11 one more brandon bond 11 yeah. hit him up there we go Say word thanks guys i'll see y'all <laughs> thank you so where's your next uh competition where are you guys gonna be so people we can come in, out and see you <laughs> we are in clinton south carolina next week for the three gun nation okay. southeastern no, regional eastern regional eastern regional Eastern um, Regional. That is our, our next big one. Yeah. Then we're in. we got a couple monthly matches, and then we're in Alabama in June. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alabama. And, uh, I'll be heading to Florida at the end of May to shoot the ladies' long-range class with Candace Horner to learn about gas the gas gun series that PRS is starting. Cool. Um, so we'll be shooting out to 800 yards trying to That'll be fun. transition mm -hmm. the long guns from three-gun, shooting long-range and three-gun, to um, shoot long-range and PRS. So. Very yep. excited about that. And do you guys have social medias that people can yes. follow you and keep up with you? Team Clevenger Shooting on Facebook. Team Clevenger Shooting on, on yep. Instagram. Uh, team Clevenger Shooting on YouTube. I mean, you yep. just type in Team Clevenger Shooting, you're going to find yep. it. Y'all on, on the YouTubes? We on the YouTubes. Yep. Not yep. as much awesome. as Facebook yeah, we, and Instagram, but yeah. YouTube, YouTube just takes you long to download stuff. And now you're on the podcast. So and now we are yeah. officially on Talking Lead. Hills, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got to get like a we talking lead it. logo on here yeah, somewhere too. Let's do it. Send Let's me one, it. man. Send me that. one. I got a sticker. Yeah, a I'll sticker. Be, <laughs> let me get enough stickers so every match I can put a sticker <laughs> right? on. We'll, it'll be there. Because oh, it'll we, be we, uh, we, halfway through. It'll be off. We can uh, we can add them to the guns. We can put or them on the guns. That way put it's on the case. There. No, on the no, gun. On the gun, on the gun itself. itself. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be sweet. Get more than two. You know when they. Oh yeah. I'm gonna screw up. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it on crooked the first time, and then I'll have to do it five more times to get it correct. So. There we go. But All right, guys. Thanks so much for being on. For Thank us. you. We, we enjoyed it. it. Look forward to having you back on again. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We'll get uh, get on halfway through the season, or I'll be at Rock Castle Pro Am. Okay, well Nick, I'll be set up. Nicky won't be there, but I'll be there if okay. you want to. Yeah, have absolutely. To work. We'll have some time to chat if you want to get together. We'll do. It. I'm bringing the equipment, so we'll. Heck yeah, man. We'll do it again. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you. Thing. I'm just gonna record it. Okay. And then it'll be posted sometime in the next week or two. Cool. I've done like 300 interviews this week. <laughs> that's awesome, man. I like that. Put that man. down. I just, I, I'm sorry. That Do it. It feels very uncomfortable. Do it that way. And it's got a long cord, so. <laughs> you take as much as you need there. Oh, okay. You could walk around the whole convention center for once. So I'd like to talk with my hands a lot while doing <laughs> Tony talk Robinson, twice. are you going to kill me? <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the Talking Lead Show. We are at the 2017 NRA Annual Meeting, graciously being hosted by our buddies at the High Threat Concealment Booth 2211. 
And uh, we've got our next guest joining us now. We have Lauren and Cy Hudson with Hudson Manufacturing. Is that what it is? Hudson Manufacturing, that's okay. right. I didn't know what your last part was. You were covering it up there. So. Uh, yeah. MFG. MFG. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> oh, no, that, that's, that's... And uh, <laughs> I'm sure you lead heads are familiar uh, with all the buzz from uh, SHOT Show about their new pistol that they've got. And is it got a is it got a name other than the Hudson? It's the H9. The H9. Yes. Very nice. And uh, it's I don't know how you describe it. It's like a ni- 1911 stylish. Um, what's the cross between what what has it been described as? What? A lot of people like to simply describe it as if a 1911 and a Glock had a baby, but we have a, a lot there of other go. designs that inspired us with this one. Right. There's yeah. a. It's a striker, uh, striker-fired pistol with a 1911-style trigger, and then the feature points that everybody's getting excited about it has a, a very low bore axis or a high grip purchase, or however you want to really wrap your head around that. And then uh, right. the full-size slide being right on top of uh, the, uh, the grip, right on top of uh, the trigger guard there, um, we necessitated a barrel design where we move forward and down, mm-hmm. and uh, then the full-size recoil spring nested below that, that's why that's what gave it its unique profile form did follow function and so it it's is a, 15 plus one nine millimeters so a lot of people it's very sexy oh, thank, thank you, you. It, it is a very sexy gun um it kind of reminds me of that um silencer co the internally suppressed mm-hmm. the maxim nine the maxim nine oh, yeah. like a smaller version of the maxim nine it kind of it's kind of got that profile to it um but this is an all metal gun yes. right it's all metal. Forged it steel. has, it has some some weight to it. Mm-hmm. It's around um, thirty-four but, ounces. But that's not a bad thing for a handgun, guys. You know, a lot of people get caught up, you know, in the weight of a handgun. But that's just going to mitigate your recoil. It's going to keep you more accurate on target. And uh, as far as your recoil goes on this, you're talking about the the profile of the barrel when it, you know, when it's going back and forth. Talk about that a little bit. So the, the placement of our recoil spring is why we have that unique profile down in front of the trigger guard. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, you do a double take, it looks familiar, and then you're like, oh, what is that up front there? Yeah, is that a laser on there? Is right. That, you know, what we is had that? a lot of that early. light on there? Yeah. So that's actually our recoil spring, and it's in line with the center of our trigger guard. Um, it's pretty low compared to where um, most traditional real estate is for a recoil spring. Right. The idea being that I've got this slide force coming back, and the thing that's going to stop it is my wrist, which rotates. And in physics, we call that torque. Yeah. Right? And um, the the higher up that spring is over my hand, the more of that vector force that's going to lift up. So I'm going to have more muzzle flip. Right. Uh, by lowering that spring, we're going to get more of that impulse back into the it's meat of our muscle It's going to more of the meat of the hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think... Was that intentional? Very. When, okay. So, so um, the, the actual thought of that was for that. Okay. It was it was driven by us wanting to get our bore axis lower. We were seeing that a lot of uh, designs to, to get that hand closer to the barrel for manageability, they mm. were undercutting and bringing the hand up to meet the barrel. And we, we saw that that was starting to offset our trigger finger placement. As my hand goes up, my trigger finger had a tendency to want to point down. Right. So we wanted to bring the barrel down to the hand and kind of just said, all right, we're going to do that. We're going to drop the full size slide down and reimagined where we put everything else. Yeah, right. Very so nice. I really, you know, I love the Steyr M series from a design standpoint. And what they did to lower the bore axis on that pistol is they they threw your hand right up there, but there's still a lot of meat, a lot of mm-hmm. real estate uh, above the trigger guard that they were dealing with. So um, looking at that, the off axis. You know, moving your hand in an off-axis position and then a rotational trigger introduced into it, you're introducing a lot of inherent movement to your shot process. So whenever you have movement, your sight picture, your sight alignment, uh, you have to train around that or you're going to move your front sight, which that's not what you want to do. So ours being straight, your hand straight, and your, and your trigger pull straight, you have minimal disruption in your sight picture during your shot process. Very good. That's a very good explanation of that. Now, as far as how it shoots... It shoots flat. Mm-hmm. shoots flat, Very right? Flat. Yes. I didn't get a chance. Like I said, I missed it at SHOT Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I walked up right when you guys were shutting the line down. Sorry um, about that. No, that's not true. I mean, I, I, you know, it's my fault for chitty-chatting around with everybody, not getting <laughs> up there. But um, 
the feedback, like you were saying, and that's what I was hearing from everybody too, and what is like, it's it's just it's a really flat shooter. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you look at it, it makes sense that that's why it's the way you have the you know the ergonomics and the design and the placement of the spring there, it just it, it forces you that way. It is. It's yeah. very manageable. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it can't help it. It was designed to be he flat just can't shooting. help it. Poor, poor fella. <laughs> poor fella can't help but shoot flat. Poor guy. So it's not a girl? No. No. Guns or guys? I think it's a guy. It's like boats or girls, That's right? A, Lauren, said it was, Lauren said it was a boy. Yeah. It's a dude. This, it's this, a is, dude. Our, this is our this baby. Is dude. <laughs> we might have to uh, put an inscription or an engraving on it to, you know, so everybody knows it's a dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke. <laughs> So, in the magazine capacity, you said was uh, 15 plus 1? 15 plus 1. 15 plus 1, okay. It does and ship with three. What kind of magazines are you? Are these proprietary magazines? They are. With how much we uh, dropped the slide down, we had to have our own proprietary cuts. But we did design around a proven tube. It's on an old Smith & Wesson 5900 series tube. We opened up the, the lips at the bottom to allow for extensions in the future. Right. Um, and uh, Cy likes to throw in there the heritage from the yeah, high so power with that tube design. The so. 5900-5906 tube uh, has a heritage in the high power. So, you know, back in Vietnam, the Mark 22 Hush Puppy, uh, that pistol was based off a single stack, 39-2. And so they modified them. Smith & Wesson modified them to be a double stack and used a high power magazine. Well, eventually they wanted to make their own. And so they made the 5906 tube, so that's the heritage. Okay. And, and so it's a... That's cool. Yeah, 80-plus 80, yeah. 80 years of design maturity in our in our magazine tube. Very cool. Are these are these available now for people to purchase? Our, our first ship date's going to be June 26th, and we're going to get a lot better about doing Facebook Live and trying to keep people up to date on where we are with everything. So okay. June 26th is the first shipment. And June 26th. Yes. Yeah. Well, so that's coming up. We're, yeah, we are going to be better about the updates, but... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how interested people are in like, and we signed three legal documents today and did two hours of drawing <laughs> review. And yeah, yeah. This is a people lot of People don't want to see board meetings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or board meetings, no, but keeping everybody just, updated. Just have this in the video when you do it. That's right. Yes. Just you know. show the pistol. <laughs> right. And all the people are going to hear blah, 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 June 16th. Yeah. <laughs> Well, very cool. So is this your first entry into the market? It is. For you guys? That's it. Yeah. Yep. We showed uh, the Heritage prototypes, kind of the brick, the boat anchor. I'm sure mm -hmm. you probably heard a little bit about those guys. We have them over at our booth now. Okay. Um, kind of, they're, they're very, very cool to look at now because we got somewhere with it. But if it had been a standalone, right. the, the industry would have said, get out. Yeah, <laughs> get we, out. We, we did have a little pressure to go... Uh, to go to market with our second generation prototype uh, and we fought very hard and won to not go because we knew the pistol wasn't ready it and wasn't. I, th I think we iterated another 10 sear designs uh, before we got to one that the trigger felt like what it needed to feel like. It's got a very nice trigger, it's, a, it's just a double spring. Uh, so it is, uh, that's a integral trigger safety and the reason we were able to do that and the reason it's uh, I guess inverted you know, like Top Gun. Right. It's inverted. Uh, is because on the bottom of the chassis insert uh, that we were able to create a geometry in there, a ledge for that to work against. So it is a safety. It is an integral trigger safety. It also has an internal drop safety, which that's what F and F and S, a Glock, you know, right. any of those have. After our second generation, um, we had we weren't at a chassis yet, and we had the manual thumb safeties on there, but realized we'd lose a good portion of our striker-fired market just by having those up there. Yeah. So um, those are optional now. Uh, not oh, long. Oh, okay. So you can get. Not long after. Sisters. Those are uh, end caps on the side there. I that see that. Yeah. You can take the slide off, pop those pop off. Pop that, and if you want the the sissy sticks on there, you can put the sissy sticks. That's okay. right. Yes. Because really, this is the only safety you need. Uh, oh, okay. You know. <laughs> Oop. The old the old booger hook. <laughs> Keep the booger hook off the bang switch, and there's your safety. That's what I was always taught. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is so. This is very 1911 uh, ish. The grip, the handle, the angle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, well, it was it was forged steel on the grip. And so whenever we we were looking at what we wanted to do, like that. Thank you. That's G10 on the bottom. That lower back strap is G10, and uh, so guys will be able to customize that real easy, like okay. other shops and uh, accessory makers. Right. They're gonna be able to pop that and be like, "Oh, I can do that in the shop. That'll be easy enough." Pop that out, pop them in, and then those just screw off, and then mm -hmm. get inserts for the. And this is this G10. This all G10. It is. Easy G10 grips G10. on the grip panels and Hope G10 lower back strap. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. And then your beaver tail. That's steel. Is all steel. 
It is not like a it. grip safety. So um, more just a reference point for the hand. We like the aesthetics, the geometry back there on our 1911. So uh, yeah. it, it's also two piece. So you can actually slide both of those out. Options for guys to modify afterwards. Oh, okay. Definitely interested to see what the aftermarket does. Whether you know the guys who yes, hate sir. the beaver tail or love the beaver tail or want a yeah. palm swell or. Well, it just gives you a, it gives more brace back there. Yeah. When it's resting in the. With how low that slide is, I, I like having that in the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had one guy with really big hands. He goes, "It's gonna bite." I was like, "Well, I guarantee That's you, someone can make it wider." Yeah. yeah. Well, Longer and wider. Yeah. If yeah. you Need it. Oh yeah. Another aftermarket opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, would love that. <laughs> yeah. And your, your sights. Let's talk about your sights that are on here. So they're Trigicon HD front sights, okay. and the front cut is an MMP, and the rear cut is also an MMP front cut. Nice. And are these the ones that are going to come standard on it? Yes. That's it. Okay. And uh, the, the decision, we tried every existing rear sight cut that we could. We tried Novax. We tried CZs. We, I mean, HKs. Uh, 1911s, obviously, and the variety of those. But with, uh, with our profile, with this our is profile. what fit. Yeah, and uh, so, so it, allow, it also allows our slide Perfect vendor fit. to take uh, his cutter path and go. Bzz, bzz. He already has it set up. He doesn't have to change out. any out. So nice, Just quick, quick to the point. And then talk about your your rails up here that you got the oh, the, the ser- cuts on the top. Yeah, serrations on the, serrations the top. Serrations on the top. Yeah. Uh, more just uh, it's an aesthetic feature but also some some people you know this is an argument top of the point. slide we're talking about here guys yeah, mm-hmm. some some people uh, say that it doesn't reduce glare some people swear by it um i like it um and it, it definitely reduces yeah. the glare I mean, it's, it's it, you can tell the difference between that and that <laughs> yeah so some people have opinions <laughs> yeah, every, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um, but our, our uh, front and rear serrations on the slide, we're pretty happy about. We've had guys instinctively go to that front serration and pop it down whenever after the slide's open and just just drop the slide. Mm-hmm. And it's been really nice to see that being an instinctive part of uh, how they're working the pistol. Just part of it, yeah. Very good. And so you got you got front serrations and you got back. So I like that. I like the fact that you put them up front. A lot of you know guns don't do that. It's like the aftermarket. Where's mine at? Oh, here it is. You know. They'll send it to a you know a gun shop like mine, and they'll you know cut our own serrations up front. <laughs> that is gorgeous, That's by the way. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, that so is the, uh, and I have a ton of grip tape on things without slide <laughs> serrations. <tape>. Have, <laughs> skateboard tape. <laughs> yeah, skateboard. Hey, works great too. Yeah. I use I use that a lot of my ARs, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, the the so for a small little carry pistol, those little slick deals, you put like the rubberized grip tape, so it doesn't tear you up, and right. you can actually get your hands on it. Uh, yeah. Like, like we had a. Uh, we had some unfinished slides that we used for testing. They just didn't have the serrations on them, and we just threw some patches of grip tape on them. People saw pictures on our Instagram. They're going, what, what happened that? to the serrations? Well, it's just grip <laughs> tape. We were just out testing with it. But like, that Come on, guys. Up. Get your panties out of that, that tape held up really well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, apparently we tested it, uh, too. It works great. <laughs> so what's the breakdown process for this? All right. So you're going to uh, lock it to the rear. and Okay, then, let me do it. Can okay. I do it? Please do. Okay. All right, so I'm locking it to the rear. And then Get the you, sound effects. Nice. Uh, so on the right side, of, uh, right side of the pistol, as you hold it, okay. um, is, uh, there's a big locking lug on the fr- uh, on side, the side there. You're okay. gonna push like an AR, and it's gonna pop out on the other side. Okay. And then you're yep. gonna rotate down like a sig or anything else you know and love. Right. And then you're going to release the slide and get it forward, and then you're going to pull the trigger. And that was a design choice. We wanted where you had to pull the trigger and actually clear the weapon. The yep, yes. do pull the trigger. And then put a little upward uh, little upward pressure on that barrel because the, the recoil spring is actually maintained by the chassis insert. So that's the only real difference in the manual arms. Put a little upward pressure on that barrel and slide off. Upward and give it a little tug. And there you Just go. like that. Yep. Just like that. Okay. So, yeah, if you don't put the upward pressure right at the beginning, the barrel starts to drop down. It'll, so that, it'll yeah, that right there, that hole. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it, it's ra- it. It pretty simple. Um, but, yeah, some, some guys are going to be that new where the recoil spring is, how it's held in by the uh, the grip module and the insert as opposed to being mated with the slide in the, bar- uh, slide in the barrel. Right. That is a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you get it apart, it makes sense. I don't think anybody's going to go, oh, no, what, oh, now what do I do? <laughs> it, it, we, worked, we worked a good bit. Uh, I'm glad we don't take down the Gen 2 too often yet because if people be like, what were y'all thinking back then? Well, we were we were still refining back then to get to this point. 
So I'm, I'm putting it back together now. So I'm yep. sliding the slide back in. Mm -hmm. Pop the. Yep. Well, retract push it, it all the way to the rear and, uh, and lock the slide back. It'll make it easier. It's all because the way in, right? Yep. Lock it to the rear. Lock it to the rear. Okay. Yep. And so uh, the big difference there is that locking lug, that takedown pin, is the front lug that the barrel is resting on. Okay. So that is a it is a patent pending barrel design, and so that is uh, that has been a lot of fun in the R and D department. Thank Just you. like that, yeah. Oh, did it pop all the way in? Yep. Should. That was good. Okay. All right. <laughs> I did it right, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm notorious for breaking shit, so. <laughs> It's all right. It, I don't know if you popped it all the way in. I think it just needs to pop. This one? Pop. Oh. There, there you go. go. Ah, okay. Ah. That's what the pop. Okay. <laughs> now. You were right. Our, our bad. <laughs> Very cool. Perfect. And what's the price point? I mean, that's the most. We're 1147 MSRP. We're going to be shipping with the three mags. I think you already talked about the Trijicon HD front sights, mm -hmm. VCG 10 grip panels, and the Hogue G10 lower backstrap. And okay. so. it is, like we said, it is forged steel, and it is a stainless steel barrel, and all the all that steel is covered by H&M black nitride. Yeah. So it is a premium feature set, and we are, I know some people would rather, uh, or like, have a little heartburn about the price, but we're being very aggressive with the features that we have at the price point. How many do you have coming out in your first wave? Uh, we are not putting all those numbers out there, and that's simply. Uh, I got you. But There's we, ramp up, so it, whatever the longest. Is it going to be certain like areas? Is it going to be we'll be USP, all over? We'll be USPSA legal within two months, <laughs> if if that gives anyone any indication. And we do have seven distributors that are pushing them out uh, across every state that can get them. Across America. America. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Very good. All right. So, is there anything else that we need to talk about feature-wise on the gun? Because I want to talk about you guys real quick too. We want to learn more about the Hudsons. Uh, reversible magazine release and ambidextrous uh, slide stop. Um, and other than that, it was it was. It's a awesome. sexy beast, man. I mean, you guys, you. <laughs> you guys got a hit on your hands. There's no doubt. Thank you. Thank you very we much. We did some uh, light rail optimization recently. That was one of the most frequently asked questions at shot, especially from the LE guys. Is right. what's it going to look like with my light on it? Can what's I fit it all look the lights? Like? <laughs> um, how just, am I going to actuate that? Like, just know you can put a light on it, dude. Well, yeah. Well, actually, guys are worried about the light manipulation techniques and you know talking about the TTPs of that. And I'm like, it's very similar. It's going to go where it always goes. It's down at the bottom of the gun. <laughs> Your finger's going to be manipulating just like you would. Well, it's, I mean, the, it's like the ALG six-second mount, and you know, for everybody who knows who requested those and how how often they run handguns, I mean, it can be figured out. It can be figured out. Right, right. I mean, if you look at the profile, I'm, I'm holding my Glock up next to this, <laughs> the uh, Talking Lead Templar Knight version. I mean, it doesn't. It's not that much lower than the Glock anyway. Yeah, so. it's, it's not that much taller either. Right. Yeah. So what? Maybe less than a half of an inch difference. I think. Uh, I think for a Glock 19, a standard Glock 19, we have about actually. Is that a standard Glock 19 or? This is a 26. Uh, this yeah. is a uh, 23. 23. Okay. So yeah. a, a 19, we're about 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 inches taller than 19. Okay. And so. So yeah. That's yeah. Negligible. Yep. It's it's a uh, it's an optical illusion because the back is so high and the front is a little bit wider. Most mm -hmm. people think they're a lot bigger than it actually is. Right. Yeah. So basically, what you've done is you've just taken up all that space right there. We've redistributed the real estate down and forward. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, I like it. It's great. Thank you. So something to look forward to coming out. Save your money, lead heads, because you're definitely going to only get you one or two of these. <laughs> Holsters. Uh, I'm sure people are already uh, on board with. That was actually what we were doing with optimizing the accessory rail. Wanted to get that right before the, the guys got the, the mold. So they should have that in about the next week. And okay. uh, holsters should be rolling off right with these guys. So. So, Safari Land, Blade Tech, Galco, DeSantis, uh, obviously HTC, G Code, right. Raven Consumer. These all, all the guys have been awesome. And not not everybody had to, but they all came and stopped by the booth. And we we're, we're get, trying to get them the, the aluminum blanks as soon as possible. Awesome. Good deal. So nobody's got to worry about supply holsters yep, they're yep. going to be out there too that's Correct. the goal very good very good so talk about how your company started the, the history of, of hudson manufacturing oh this is all you <laughs> <laughs> so uh he was active duty still we were stationed in north pole alaska and i like to tell people north that pole yeah, yeah. Right you don't from, hear people right down the street from santa that. claus house yeah oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah um and uh protecting santa claus right <laughs> 
<laughs> for sure. And pretty much there's nothing up there to, to get out to when it's 60 below, but uh, Netflix, alcohol, and guns. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, uh, I'm pretty sure. There's a song in there. It's <laughs> a good country, country song. song. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, like that. yeah, pretty much had binge watch shows on in the background with a drink and guns disassembled all over the table and sitting there. And we just had a lot more time to answer the what if question. And there's right. plenty of people that have the what ifs. I wonder if I combine this. There's great features on a ton of things. And right. Getting it was them all a, together. It was a full year of research before any development started. Yeah. I mean, we, we researched and researched and we became uh, gun patent and gun nerds, took them apart, broke a lot of them. Uh, sat there and tried to understand everything that was going on. How does it reset? Why does it reset? Uh, those questions you really don't think about until you're trying to create something. Yeah. Why do people say what they say about the guns? You know, what what kind of criticism? What's what's an in vogue trait at the time? Is mm -hmm. it something that's just you know at, at the time, or is there some validity to it? Sure. So. And what stood the test of time? Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Why did why why did I, you know, I'll say you know, high-speed units keep on wanting to try to make the 1911 their pistol. Why did they keep them? Why did it take so long for that to go out? Yeah. Um, and every review we read, they started gushing about the trigger. And you know, and then we shot our 1911s a lot, and then we shot our striker fire pistols a lot. And it came to us was like the trigger doesn't move your front sights during your shot process. It, that's why you can yeah. get back on that. You can you can reacquire your front sight quicker because you have less inherent movement, and uh, that's where we started. And then why did they stop using the 1911? Why did that? Mm -hmm. And they talked about them falling apart. They talked about how expensive they were, how the design for manufacturability was over 100 years old. You know, right? Hand fit the magazine reason, capacity. Yep. Yeah. The reason the reason that all these awesome 1911s, the one that you just can run, are like three thousand dollars is because it's a hundred year old design for manufacturability you know wages were lower back then yeah so a lot, lot of a lot of dork a lot of dorking out and nerding out about this drinking, stuff right? oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. then we moved to microsoft paint so when we were microsoft paint I'm not kidding, that <laughs> that's a our, very basic program that right? was our first engineering software um we we had screenshots of these things and we were like all right if i brought that slide down and we just erased a good portion of the top of our frame and it's really? like all right we'll figure out where to put everything else later that's like that's like it's a sketch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> microsoft paint yeah yep. i think our first our, our first things ever we ever sent to an engineer were actually microsoft powerpoints and i think it was of a of a good wilson combat that nice. we had sat there and redistributed everything like what about this yeah and what it, do you think about this yeah so it was a Real technical uh, upbringing. What's your background? I have a math degree. Um, okay, so that makes sense. I have, a, I have an analytical brain. He has some mechanical engineering in his track, although he likes He's to say that he head. just brought the pizza. I did. I had great <laughs> lab partners. That's how I, I passed pizza that course. Pizza and Jameson. Huh? Oh, it was great. Well, we, so I, I'm not going to hit too much on where I went to school. I, I did go to the South Hudson Institute of Technology, um, West Point. West Point. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, South Hudson Institute of Technology. Oh, okay. Got uh, it. But, uh, so I did do a mechanical engineering track there, but uh, my lab partners were absolutely awesome. And I do, but I, I love guns. I was on the pistol team there. So I, you know, that was the most trigger time I ever got. It was two hours a day for six, seven days a week for two years. Right. And that was a lot of time on a trigger and a lot yeah, of time with, with pistols. So uh, really, really uh, grateful for my, my coach back then for allowing me to be a part of that. Yeah. I, I was training with an instructor when we met. So we kind of bonded over that and when we knew he was getting out of the army we were talking about okay well let i think maybe we'd like to work together let's go into business possibly we did a good together. test case, <laughs> yeah. right so she, she's underselling together. herself we we did everyone a favor we we did the um whole we did the garage ffl model we sold stuff for a while that was one of the best educations we ever got we learned mm -hmm. ins and outs of atf form requirements and every single buddy of his that had some kind of requirement for a rifle up there right he got we got to get our hands on get the research so cool. and also discover whether or not we'd kill each other working together <laughs> <laughs> but also a lot of respect for everybody who does retail in this industry Absolutely. so no doubt yeah that having is. to deal with the, the it is all atf it's a lot all the paperwork oh, yeah. and bull crap behind that yeah but yeah, so whenever whenever we deployed to Afghanistan, I think it was 2011, Lauren took a contract and went over there. She had a much more fun deployment than I did. She was running around uh, downtown Kandahar in a burka with a cream cough underneath. It was a lot of fun. 
<laughs> I told you she was underselling herself. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> I was too tall for my burka, so I kind of waddled. I had to bend my knees. She's like one of the older ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you guys over there? Just a year. Deployment. Just a year? Yeah. Just a year? Yep. Well, that was cool. You got to go together, huh? Yeah. That's exactly what his grandma said when she found out we were going. She, uh, she uh, asked what I was going to be doing for the year, and she goes, well, that's nice. Y'all get a taken a bit of the country together. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, it's so a vacation, Grandma. I'm from Mississippi. She's a southern Mississippi. Well, isn't that lovely, dear, being able to take a bit of the country in together? <laughs> did she really <laughs> say that? She did. No, no, that's no joke. <laughs> oh, it was funny. That is great. Yep. Yes, Nan. <laughs> So, um, military background, yeah. for, math, for me. mathematician over here. Uh, yeah, Einstein. She's a lot smart. She, I married up. I'm man. horrible. With you her married up. I did. You're <laughs> way out of your league. I'm way right? out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys originally from? Mississippi. Both of you? No. I, no, I grew up in Maryland. Transferred out to uh, California to finish school. Okay. And um, we had our first date in California. Yeah, we did Halloween. That was a lot of fun. Halloween? Yes. Yeah. Or what'd you dress up as? So we didn't plan it, and you're going to kind of be like, oh, God. Like, did not plan our outfits. I showed up as Indiana Jones. And I went as Laura Croft. Wow. Yeah. You, you want to, yeah. And you didn't plan that. No. We did not. I know that sounds That's really awesome. dorky, but yes, that is the true story. <laughs> so are you guys like, no way? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, we were. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's so cool. <laughs> and I had a crush on Harrison Ford when I was little. So. Not there me. You, you notice what she said. She didn't say on me on at you. the time. She said Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford. So that helped. <laughs> it did. Yeah. What year was this? Was 2010. Nine. Nine? Okay. Sorry. Yes, obviously. Nine or ten. Is that when the like the last the Indiana Jones came out? I think I that came out. I haven't seen that one. It's no. horrible. Oh, my God. I, it's a horrible see, one. See, and yeah. I even read the novels as a kid, and I don't even know if people know those exist. But yeah. Read, oh, yeah, yeah. The Young Indiana Jones. The Young, though. yeah. The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. Oh, man. There was a TV, uh, yeah, a TV show. Yep. I think, um, <laughs> what's his name? It's River Phoenix. No, uh, Boon, it was the guy from the Boondock Saints, uh, the other brother. Oh. Yeah, his um, the uh, Well, the, the one St. Patrick. Patrick something. Yeah. It's one of him. <laughs> yeah, that guy. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> the one who whines. Yeah. River Phoenix played him in the movie. Yep, yes. that's right. Young Indiana Jones in, in the, the movie. Last that's Crusade. What yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's cool. Where are you from? I'm from Tennessee. Okay, I was wondering about the accident. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Nashville area. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. You guys ever get to Nashville? Yes. Uh, yes, we have. Okay. I like Nashville. You'll have to holler at me next time you're there, and we'll go eat some good food. That sounds yes. good to me. Hell yeah, we'll do that. So you guys have the? Do you have anything else in there? You're talking about rifles. I think we're going. Is that your next? Where you're going to get a bunch of rifles and throw them down and disassemble them, throw them on the coffee table, and <laughs> start rearranging the parts? And where, where, where we're working to go uh, is to create an H9 product family. We are saying we are a true startup, so please buy uh, yeah. one of the steel, or you will not see the anything else because the R&D dollars. <laughs> <won't be here. laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't think you guys are going to have any problems moving these. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. That's why hear. I'm going ahead and asking about your next project because these things are going to well, we we, go like hotcakes. We've been asking everybody what they want. Some guys are saying they, they want different calibers, and but the majority of people want to see uh, they want to see different materials for a grip, and what they want to see is they want to see uh, a more accessible price point for some people. Yeah. Um, and that makes sense. We have a big premium feature set. I mean, like VZ grips, I think, retail like 80 and that. Trigicon HD yeah, details I mean, around got, seventy. There's, I mean, there's some things you could cut back on a little bit, but yeah. yeah. But, but as long as we as long as we keep it a quality product, we Absolutely. cannot we can never release a non quality product. We, so, we took yeah. extra time with designing, especially with the chassis and everything, to make sure that it could easily translate into right. other things. Right. So. Yeah. so we're looking forward to that. That's cool. But our marketing guys are like, please don't tell everybody. We'd love a chance to tease people again and get them all <laughs> excited and uh, do a, do another big splash. So we're looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to it. And it's June the 19th, right? 26th. 26th. Well, I'm yeah, trying you, to move it up I a know little you, bit. I, I know. You took a you week from us. <laughs> I was like, bump it up a little bit. Bump <laughs> it up. Um, all right. So I have this line of question that I ask new people on the show. Okay. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because uh, we're running out of time here. I'm just going to hit you with a couple. All right. All right. And uh, you, you guys choose which one of you answer which one, okay? So when it comes to pop culture, and I think I know the answer to this already, What's your go-to, whether it's a movie, a book, uh, music, um, video game that's, that's gun-related? What's your favorite, firearms-related? Can, can I say Firefly and no one judge me 
because Mal Reynolds and Jane awesome, man. Coven. No, <laughs> Joe Mo with Ackless Defense. That was his. That was his answer. <laughs> Firefly. I love, I love Firefly. It. I'd never heard of it until then. He was telling me about it. I went and watched it. I was like. Hooked. Oh, I was like, yeah. "Why did they cancel this? I this know. is ridiculous." I Fox, those evil, evil people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to take that one. That was a good one. Go ahead. Let's That's hear your answer. answer. What, what's your answer? Oh man, one of my favorite movie ever is Fifth Element. So, and it, don't, uh, don't start Willis? saying that my gun looks like a space gun now, though, because <laughs> no, no, I would never say that. <laughs> that is a very nice hat. <laughs> that is a very is that, nice hat. <laughs> what was the premise? Of, I know the name. Is that Bruce Willis? Yeah. Yes. Fifth Element. Yeah. Is that where the Gary chick Oldman? has the, the yellow? Strip over, yeah, yeah, Mila Jovovich. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was a Halloween costume last year. Or yeah, two, two we years did that ago? last year. Bruce Willis, Mila Jovovich. <laughs> did you go as Bruce Willis? Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> got the blonde hair going and everything. <laughs> nice. All right, so what is your your bucket list? Uh, firearm or piece of kit or gear? Mm. What's your next gotta have? Like want to have firearm? Okay, so I wanted to bid on a Smith & Wesson ASP back in the day when like Theodore Paris and the and the, the different models uh, that they were doing. But right now I am on the lookout for a Webley 1913 455. There uh, you go. So, uh, if you know of one, yes, please. Hit, hit them up, up on social media. Webley 1913 455. During our development, we tried to make sure we owned one of everything that inspired us. So we, we have some but just case studies, whether it was don't do this, <laughs> do that. Um, we had them. So yeah. in our in our teaser videos, you saw a table with a bunch of guns out on it. Those were a lot of those guns that inspired it. We got a a, a vector. A vector CP1. Oh from yeah. South African, oh, okay. the, the Nell and, Corporation. Uh, oh yeah, that was yes. fun from South Africa. And then uh, a lot of a lot of guys who really know their history uh, were like, Is, didn't Alchemy already try this with a Spectre pistol back in the day? So but we got one of those. We, we have one we, for R and D. We were looking at what. Where they did you find that? Day. A lot of looking. A lot of hunting. A lot of looking. Very cool. Bicycle lock and all. Bice- it does. It, that, that, have you ever seen that on the Alchemy huh. Spectre? It basically has a bicycle lock at the bottom. Really? No no, no judgment or hate, but back oh. in the day, uh, interesting. That's, that's what they used. It's very interesting, yeah. yeah. That is cool. That yeah. Is, cool. Is, that what, is that your answer? It is. Rounding answer? out the collection. Just so rounding out the collection. getting that first. So okay. we got um, two consecutive serial P7s for our 30th birthday this past year. That was for our 30th birthday. Yes. Our, yes. Well, we're both the same age. It's not the same date. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you celebrate <laughs> the same day? <laughs> Pretty much. He said Mississippi. He didn't mean to freak anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hold on a minute. Well, you said <laughs> no. you were from somewhere else. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it cleared up. No inbreeding going on there, huh? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> All right, last question. How did you originally, I mean, obviously you guys are gun nuts. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. And you're young, you know, so how did you originally get involved with firearms? Uh, you first. I was much later. Um, my first shooting instructor I had right after college in California, and he was a former. In California. California. He was a former Amazing. SWAT instructor. Um, I was looking to go active duty at the time. And I told him, I said, I want to master my first test. I uh, had him train me with the Beretta first because I knew that that was what I would have been issued, what I would have been shooting. Right. And uh, the mathematician uh, in her, practical. So practical. I started getting all that down, and uh, he goes, so I know that this is what you want to want to train with. And he brought in a Les Bear one time, and he goes, I just need you to try this. <laughs> just try it. <laughs> and I've been a 1911 girl since. So. And it shows in the in the Hudson there. Yeah. yeah. I was, I started on guns. Uh, my first hunt trip, I was nine years old. There uh, you go. I yeah. had a 243 handy rifle with a Tasco scope. That's where I started Sweet. out. Sweet. Do you it, still have that? Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, it's still. And sh- I, I it's want to be an heirloom. Th- I want to thread it and put a suppressor on it. And Lauren goes, don't mess with it. Don't mess with the, something that's an heirloom. I'm like, what? You want to blow out our kids' ears? I mean, we're, we're still in this discussion. <laughs> um, but I kept on. I was like, I read, I read a bunch of Louis L'Amour novels as a kid. So, you know, I got all nerdy oh, yeah. about uh, gun you know cowboy guns and then i uh, got into obviously the military stuff later but jane jane's guide to guns was my bring to school book that i kept on getting sent to the principal can't, for can't do it was that. awesome <laughs> so uh, oh yeah you can't do that nowadays yeah, so i've been nerding out quite a while all right last one i said that was last i'm gonna do okay. one more okay you guys are doing great on these questions so. <laughs> if you could spend the day at the range with anyone God. or a group fictional Still alive, dead. Who would who would it be? Oh man, 
there's too many to choose. This is this is first one just came to mind. Who is it? Okay, so Bill Wilson stopped by our booth yesterday. Okay. And my wedding present was uh, Wilson Spec Ops 9. And this is just off the top of my head, but sure. that was one of the most awesome experiences, shaking his hand yesterday. Absolutely, and him, man. Him yeah. trying our trigger. So I'd like to spend a day at the range with that man. I'm, I'm flubbing. I've got too many heroes. I've got too many, too many guys I'd love to shoot with. Uh, Indiana Jones don't count because we never talked about Indiana Jones. Yeah, and well, James Bond. Actually, I would not like to spend too much time at the range. You know, yeah, that, the bar. Yeah, yeah. You know. spend, spend time with him yes, at the bar. Yes, right. <sighs> Man, I'm stinking on this one. Actually, I'd like I'd actually like to meet Keanu Reeves and spend some time at the range. Keanu Reeves, you want, and actually one of the reasons for that is he went through uh, design and specking out a motorcycle, and I would like to pick his brain about what their process went through and what they did on that. And uh, that's go. that's a guy that who awesome. I would really love to do that and uh, get inside the brain uh, or their thinking on that motorcycle. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey I'm, I'm telling you, when I went I went back and watched Point Break. I mean, that's some, that's some shotgun The original handling. point, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the new shotgun. one sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> that remake they did? Uh, the visuals, horrible. though. The, like, the visuals of them doing the, the right. squirrel, squirrel suits, suits. Yeah. that was great. But, yeah. no, it does not compare to Keanu and it's Patrick Swayze tearing thing. it up. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. But yeah. Great movie. Good answer. I, I like caught my one. first tube today, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> she told me if we ever meet him, I can't do that. It's as a no. newsflash, no. Bodie. <laughs> I am an FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> you do that well. Yes. <laughs> I've seen it a few times. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so no, much. It was great you. meeting you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank um, you for your time, man. Just know that this is the place for exclusives. So anytime you got new products or new announcements, get in touch with me and we'll do it. We'll drop it here to Leadhead Nation. Most thank excellent. you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Show. Special National Rifle Association Annual Meeting Edition. Uh, it was Volume 2. We've got Volume 3 coming up uh, here in the next couple of days, so you guys stay tuned. And uh, just a reminder, don't forget about the Talking Lead and 1776 United T-shirt contest that we've got. Actually, it's a logo design contest that we've got going on for you lead heads. Help us design a logo specifically for you guys, the listeners of Talking Lead, the Lead Head Nation. And uh, you could win an awesome swag package that would include a T-shirt with that logo, a patch with that logo, the classic Talking Lead logo T-shirt from 1776 United, and a $100 gift card to be used at 1776 United Shop. Uh, pick out anything you want there. So that's an awesome little prize. You guys take part in that. Go to 1776 United's webpage, and uh, at the bottom it says Leadhead Contest. Click on that. And that's where you're going to uh, submit your design ideas. So we've got a lot of participation in that so far. So we great logo Alright guys, we'll be back uh, so uh, pretty soon with the next one. Uh, 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 big thanks to all the sponsors. Eagle Imports, those guys uh, were great and you know, sponsored us for a couple of days there at NRA, sending up the booth and you know, you know, lined up. Uh, that's what Modern Spark Systems, modernspartsystems.com, and of course, X Down Steel Targets, X Steel Death Targets. Is on the loose. Is on all your 500 Steel Target needs, check them out, Load thanks for target. Guns. And then all the things of the show, Glock, Caltech, Palmetto State Armory, Active Defense, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. So on all the guests that are on the show, make sure you guys go. So if you got any questions about any of the products while you're listening to the show, all 
All right, guys, until next time, loved ones close, firearms closer.